Yo, what's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to the podcast, another episode of Caffeine and Green with your man, Connor Cardenas. And per usual, I want to make sure that you guys know about coming to the coffee shop. That's right. We have our first brick and mortar and is on El Cajon Boulevard in San Diego, California. That's right, baby. 3072 El Cajon Boulevard. Come pull up. We're open Tuesday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And on Sundays, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And on Mondays, we are closed for roasting. Guys, come pull up. Um, we're me, Lola. We're behind the bar every single day, and we would definitely like to see you guys make you a latte, just chat, do whatever. Or you guys can come get a mug or a bag of coffee. Anything caffeine and green related, we can make it happen. All right. So, guys, that's 3072 El Cajon Boulevard. Come and pull up. All right. My guest today are a returning guest, Marco Laguna, and we also have a new guest, Brandon, er, Brandon Keeper. Keeper, yes, Brandon Keeper. Brandon is the chef and owner of Wavy Burgers, or oh damn, Wavy, just Wavy. It's Wavy. It's a sandwich shop, or oh, it's anything between two buns is basically what he described, and you'll hear it on the podcast. And Marco now is opening up a coffee bar called Friends of Friends, and it's all in a one shared space, so it's really exciting. And I wanted to have them on to talk about the soon to come. Friends of Friends and Wavy in the space in National City. Guys, it is super exciting. They're my really good friends, and I'm just so pumped. I wanted to put them on, and I wanted to have them share it with all of you around the world. So without further ado, my guys, Marco Laguna, Brandon Keeper. This is your time to shine, homies. Let's go. Give me cap, cap, caffeine and green. It's your boy, Connor. We're live, gentlemen. Brandon, Brandon, what's your last name? Keeper. Keeper. Like a zookeeper or a goalie. <laughs> Sick. Brandon Keeper and Marco Laguna. What's good? You're welcome to Caffeine and Green, guys. Cheers, Cheers. boys. Thank Let you. me kiss a salute. Boom. Okay, right here. I'm gonna tell the people, it's a Coates de Rhone. It's a red wine. It's very, very nice. Mm-hmm. What about ASMR? I love it. I love it. It's a nice. We were talking about the viscosity of the le- uh, what the legs and the, the, the wine means just a minute ago. About It's viscosity, in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, Marco, first of all, welcome back. Thanks, bro. Been on the podcast. Yes, so sir. People around the world know who you are. Uh, and Brandon, first time on, pod- on Caffeine and Green, sir. Yeah, thank you. Dude, it's a privilege. You. Welcome, welcome. Um, but the reason, like, I'm just going to get right into it. The reason you guys are here today you guys, me and Marco, well, Marco came in the coffee shop a couple weeks ago and I had been thinking about him and I was like, damn, I really want to get him on the show because you have some exciting news. Yes, sir. Yes. And let's go ahead and tell everybody. And both of you are involved. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So Brandon, actually, you're going to be an owner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is fun to think about. Welcome to the club, my G. I know. It's yeah. Weird. It's really hard. <laughs> 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 For real. Um, yeah. So we're, uh, we're finally opening up our spot. This year, hopefully May. Um, yes. Friends of Friends, Wavy, 10K, all under the same roof. Those are all three separate businesses? Correct, yes. Okay. I know it sounds kind of funky, but... Um, when you said it all together, it kind of... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, front, it's going to be split into two two sections. So, front half is going to be our full-on cafe, mm-hmm. listening bar, and restaurant. So a Listening bar? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, shit. I know we're hopping on the train. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, Survive. it's not a train to hop on, you know me. It's, it's mainly just for that passion of music. I need it around me. Yeah. yeah. Dude, no, 100%. Yeah, so um, that's our front half. Um, Brandon, if you want to elaborate on Wavy. Yeah, and then Wavy will be our um, our food service side. So I'm like elevated, fast, casual. It's really nice. Anything between a bun. I'd say a sandwich is my favorite vehicle for food. Oh, anything between a bun? Yeah. Oh, I was like, I thought you said button. I was like, I don't know. Between a button. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, primarily sandwiches, using sandwiches as, as like a vehicle for like my past and all the partners, like favorite travels, I would say too, because most things can go between two pieces of something that has flour incorporated into it. Nice. Yeah, whether it's like a taco burrito. Yes, sir. Sando. A taco burrito sando. Yeah. What? That is just like, <laughs> there's a lot going on in that <laughs> <Yeah>. name. <laughs> is that is that what you have right now? Or no, something you're going to have? That, that That's just like the probably the three categories. I'm just not good at uh, putting commas in between things. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, when it comes down to it, the, the space will work as one. 
you know, yeah. um, we're not, I mean, even though we are separate businesses, technically, mm -hmm. um, it's also going to work together, um, is our goal. Um, even including 10 K. So, I mean, you'll be able to see 10 K, um, through our cafe. So 10 K is going to be the roasting facility in the back, um, co-roasting space, coffee lab. It's going to be a whole coffee geeks like playland. Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, dude. It's pretty nuts. Um, I haven't seen it updated, but it's, it yeah. looked fucking cool. It's gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, as of today too, when we were yeah. just there, it was, it's pretty incredible. All of, uh, yeah. All the coffee lab equipment's put in. We got our, our U in there. We have our bullet in there. We our have, U? um, espresso machine. You espresso machine. What's that? Is that a, just a kind of espresso machine? Yeah. So we have like four different machines in our lab. Um, a lot of it is. Damn. Yeah. So, I mean, if Noah is going to, I don't want to speak on him uh, on his behalf, but essentially what any training that he's going to do for other cafes, we need to know the different types of espresso machines, how it's going to pool, you know? So just from like your Breville to like your decent to your cafe racer, you know, San Remo. Damn. Yeah. So that, that's the, the cool part about the lab is how geeky it's going to get. Yeah. Um, that's incredible. You can provide a more accurate training based off of like what, you know, the person coming seeking training is using basically. It's like, I can teach you how to drive, but it's like, if you come to me in a Maserati versus like a Fiat, it's like, we need to have both. So I can teach you how to drive in either realistically. Damn. Yeah. What yeah. a way to look at it. Mm -hmm. That's and then, really cool. Yeah. There's two mega roasters in the back, which you saw. So we have oh, yeah. the, the yeah, Probat yeah. and then the, uh, the Geeson. Which one's the one that's all tagged up? The Geeson. That one's G. Yeah. That like one's that. cool. That one's yeah. Bird Rock's old roaster. So did they give it to you tagged or did you guys tag it? No, we tagged it. That's dope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's super dope. <laughs> I love it. I mean, you'll see once we open, it's going to, you, you'll have a lot of that element. You know, it's a public square, but also, I mean, we're, you know, where we're from just, I mean, just growing up in more street culture, you know, it's surrounded by that. We want that to be shown in the shop, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's really exciting. That's really exciting. I, you know, I'm not going to say <laughs> how much Aaron told me the windows were, but oh, what geez. I am going to say is that I know that you guys have all put a lot of effort and time and money and everything into it. And that's just really exciting it's going to be really cool to see it all come to life, especially dude, a year ago is when I went to go look at it with Aaron. Yeah. And it was empty and he was explaining it. And now it's a year later, like almost around this time too. Cause yeah. it was, yeah. oh, I mean, back? dude, it was, it might've been, dude, it was, a, no, 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 no. It was a year ago today. No shit. Yeah. You know why? Cause I came back from Tahiti. No, it would have been, it would have been March 1st. So it'll be a year ago tomorrow, tomorrow. Oh, wow. because I came back from Tahiti. I did March 20th through the 28th Yeah. and, uh, or February, February, Mar uh, February 20th to February 28th in Tahiti. And I came back and then they had the throwdown on March 1st at the Imperial space. Oh yeah. And then that was the night I went to, I went and saw it. Yeah, Damn. Crazy. How do I remember that? I don't remember shit. What a trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it means it's important. That's good. Dude. Um, <laughs> I mean, dude, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm, I'm stoked. You know, yeah. but at the same time, I, I talked to you about it. The last time I came in is like that yeah. vulnerability part, right? Where it's even with branding, you know, it's like something that we work on, you know, on our own together and then to showcase it to everybody, you know, to share with everybody. To me, that's the part that I'm a little bit more like, I hope you guys like this. You know? yeah. oh, dude, I don't even think like we were talking about before the podcast. Yeah. I, I really don't think I don't think there's going to be a way that people aren't going to be impressed mm -hmm. whether it's the, the quality of the sandwiches or the quality of the coffee or the roasting facility. I think to do what you guys are doing and to have as many passionate people behind the, each project all backed like by public square and, and Aaron and Aaron's rad as fuck. You know, he's been on the show before. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I'm not going to say it's like, it's, it's too like big to fail or like too whatever, like that term is, I forgot what it's called, but it's just when there's that many people that are involved that are passionate, it's just like, no, yeah. it's, there's yeah. no way. Like none of them would allow it to fail. Oh yeah. yeah. No, you're going to pick your, you're going to pick yourself up by the bootstraps. You're going to pick your homies up because if it's four, what, four different businesses in one, three, three. Yeah. Okay. So there's three owners. There's no way that one owner is going to see the other owner, owner struggling and be like, yeah, you're on your own, bro. Sorry. Like, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Like, Not at all. And then we're all, I mean, we're all rooted by the same purpose. I mean, when me and Brandon met, it was what? probably a year ago, like tomorrow too. Yeah. Oh probably, yeah. 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 Close, honestly. And it was just through Instagram, right? Instagram. And then we ended up, 
uh, running into each other at a Padres game. So it must have been. Oh, there you go. So yes. Probably in April. It's meant to be. Yeah, yeah dude. Meant to be. You're going to run into each other at a Padres game? That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's meant oh, to that's be. right. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, Chef Kyle. Yeah, I think I was a little a little out of it right there. But. Yes, I think we all were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he asked if I wanted to get a coffee sometime. And no one, I mean, a lot of people ask, but no one ever takes anyone up on the offer. And I was like, why wouldn't I? And he was like, yeah, I got a little shop going up down there. And I was like, and then I saw it and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, a little shop. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, this tiny thing that just takes up half a fucking square block and shit. Like, yo, what? <laughs> Dude. But yeah, we met up and started talking about um, food concepts. Or I just wanted to be involved in, in any way that I could and just catch up with. Because we're, we're both friends of friends, which is pretty fun that the name is. Ironically. That. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's like, talk to me about the name. I don't mean to cut yeah. you off. Sorry, yeah. But that's, if that's well, I mean, it that's literally it. I mean, I think me and Aaron were talking in the, the office one day, kind of just like spitballing it. And it, it just kind of came where it was like, you know, a friend of a friend type deal. And it just kind of like sounded right. I think we were playing around with, you know, broken poor, poor taste, all that stuff that I kind of like your Instagram name. Yeah. And you know, I think I just wanted to be a little bit more mindful about it and, and have more purpose behind it. You know, and friends of friends seems a little bit, well, it, it is kind of like it encompasses what I want to create, right? What we want to create. And it's, I mean, I don't want to speak necessarily for Brandon, but I think what we feel is like, I uh, creating like a, I don't know, just like the perfect kick it spot, yeah. a place for community, like a place that I always wanted to kick it at. You know, I, I I love shops all around San Diego and, you know, even up in L.A., but there's just never been a spot where I felt like this is my fucking spot. This is a spot I can kick it out all day. I can eat all day. I can drink if I want. I can have some coffee I can listen to music, you know, and you're surrounded by homies. Mm -hmm. That's my that's what I want to create. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's, it's the place that you wanted to have exist while you were growing up mm. more than likely. OK, yeah. Instead of kicking it on trails, what yeah, we were doing and canyons and, 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 you know. And crushed Arizona cans smoking out of them. Yeah, you dude. Know, just like, you can still do that, <laughs> but come get a coffee and a burger. And yeah. You, gas. <laughs> you know, nice. I mean, and, uh, you know, public square is great and it's very like welcoming and family oriented and we, we will be welcoming and very like loving, obviously. And there's passion w behind what we do. So you'll, you'll see it, but I definitely want to keep that, that bit of rawness, you know, that bit of like diviness where there's that comfortability. It doesn't feel like you're going to run into your aunt or something like that. It's just like a real kick it spot somewhere where you can just like meet up with homies or like network or, you know, be around other creatives that are trying to do the same shit. Mm. That'd be fun. A nice transition in the day too is what I imagine mm -hmm. because okay. the sun starts to go down and laptops go away. Mm. Realistically. Yeah. Vinyls come out. Are you guys going to be open? Like, what time are you guys going to, what are your hours going to be? So we're still playing around with that idea right now. We're talking um, about this morning, actually. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, personally, I, I definitely want to be open by 7, mm -hmm. always, and then ideally close down by 10 to start. Damn, really? Yeah. 10? I thought you guys were going to say, like, midnight or, like, 1. No. Um, I mean, I don't want to kind of, I don't want to jump ahead. I will kind of want to see what the crowd's like. I want to see what the feeling's like. Okay. Um, I don't want to be open later if we don't have to be. I kind of just really want to take it slowly. Um, so shoot at that 10 o'clock hour. If it's popping, we'll keep it to 12. You know, and I don't think I'll go past 12. For the sake of my staff, for the sake of his team, mm -hmm. and anyone that's going to be there, if we're going to open again at 7, um, I want to make sure that we all have a good, healthy life style. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, yeah. Interesting. Dude, fuck yeah. And what's, uh, when is the projected, I mean, if you guys are so tired of hearing this, I'm assuming like, uh, what is no, the I'm projected, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the projected open dates? Oh, I mean, I think last update we were talking about, you know, I think I'm going to try to start hiring this, this month, you know, mid March, really start putting it out there. Craigslist, indeed, everything, word of mouth, coffee network, really put it out there and then start training by April get the flow down and then hopefully by may yeah may would be great nice for sure yeah. i mean it's all pretty much done up inside it's just a matter of really just the fun part now decorating it making it ours installing equipment flow of service yeah. mock service all that good stuff anytime you want some like Oh, you know, we yeah, got you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Holla at your boy. Yeah, yeah. I'll Friendly. be there. I mean, like, yeah, the sandwich is super good. <laughs> the burrito sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Friends so family for sure. I also want to make it like a, a place where, I mean, we can work together. Or any of our homies can work together. We can mm -hmm. collaborate on things. We can do weird, funky projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the whole point of this place for me, too, where it's like it's a creative, like, 
dump, you know, like all these people that I've ever wanted to work with. Now I have, we have an actual business that we can like do something with, do collabs with breweries, do collabs with, I don't know, fucking anything. Yeah. It's like pursuing the relationships that we've like built and curated over our time and in, in whatever industry that we've been in. It's like you always bring in your plug into your your boss's job or something to try and make them succeed and put your homie on. But now it's like we can actually bring everyone into our space, all of our friends and all of our friends of friends into the same space and let everyone collaborate. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, we all know people that have like – you know, great talents, but I mean, it's, it's not necessarily like they don't have a place to put it, but I mean, if we can open up another place for them to put it, you know, like have them work on something with us or even showcase their own shit in there. You know, we have a lot of homies that do their own thing that I'm, I don't mind displaying whether it's art, whether it's merch, you know, I mean, the whole point, like I said, it's, it's to put homies on, put people on and to good shit, I think in, in, in good, good, passionate things, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's fucking dope. I like that. Yeah. Um, who's going to be running the music if you're doing vinyl? Yo, is there, are you going to have like another person doing that? Are you going to like hire vinyl club or like, yeah, hit so up G? That, <laughs> like, that is in the, in the works in my head right now. So to start, I mean, it's not, I'm trying to get the flow of bar down real service down first. Um, and then second is to the listening bar. So, um, I don't know. I, I have like five aliases on Instagram. I'm trying to like build them up, you know? Um, but so there's one that's poor music taste. So that will be, wait, you have, f- you have five different Instagrams. Yes. Oh. <laughs> They're not all actively used, that but in long. preparation. Right. So okay. I've, I've thought about this for, for years now. Okay. So poor music <laughs> taste is our, our music concept that okay. I will roll with. Okay. Um, and ideally I would like to put someone, you know, in charge of that in the head of it, whether it's like booking out selectors, um, ordering vinyl, you know, just like organizing that whole aspect, running the Instagram, um, cause I eventually what I want to do with it is make it more of like an educational aspect. Um, like teach people about like, yo, this is why this track is sick. This is why this artist is cool or important. Like, you know, just like a weekly update, you know, like album of the weeks, like re- creating playlists every month. I mean, just something that I do on a daily, but like showcasing it with people. Cause it, I want people, I'm excited about this. I want, I just want to share it. It has nothing to do with really like putting people on stuff, mm. but I want to be able to share the shit that I fuck with. Yeah. I mean, fuck yeah. <laughs> Brandon, talk to me about your background, my G. Like, so you're, you're opening up a sandwich spot, essentially. Yeah. Uh, whatever your creation is between a bun, period, right? Like, that's, so that's yeah. what it is. Um, I don't know. I'd say my favorite vehicle for food my entire life has been sandwiches. One of my earliest memories, my, my like, papa, he was, like, um, like a quality assurance, quibity assurance for Jack in a Box when I was like five. Oh wait, a what? A qui- Qual- quality assurance, quibity. Oh, assurance I was like, is, yeah. What did you say? Yeah, quibity <laughs> assurance is like when they ask um, whatever Reed in the office what his job is. He's like, uh, I don't know. I think it's quibity assurance or something. <laughs> but he's like supposed to be the quality assurance department. But um, my my grandpa did that for Jack in the Box, and I got pulled out of school. It must have been like kindergarten or something. And we went to like seven different Jack in the Boxes in the same day, and tried like Whoa. three sandwiches at seven different locations. So it's like that was one of my biggest earliest memories, like sandwich wise. I was you know that I always point to. Um, and then the availability availability of it in my house too, because growing up in like separate households with different income styles, it's like you can have like a white bread and mayonnaise sandwich, or I can always have like a ciabatta and turkey sandwich. It's something that you can always create yourself, and yeah. it's always approachable and always available. Yeah. So like food should be food is essential, and you know it can be something that you teach yourself. It's like a lot of people's introductory into cooking, I would say too. So sandwiches are, are the shit. They're dope. And there's a lot of different things that you can you can do with it and get away with, which is fun too. You know? Were you I mean, aside from that being one motivator, you're like, you know, I can definitely relate about like your family like influencing like the direction you go. Same with me with coffee. Mm-hmm. But have you traveled around the world and experienced different cultures sandwiches? Like say like the first thing that comes to mind, bon me. Like in Vietnam. No, I've never been to the only time I've been out of the U.S. Um, I got stuck in Iceland because there was a blizzard, and then I went to Amsterdam, Berlin, Offenbach, and Frankfurt, and oh. and then Mexico, of course. Oh, buttery. but yeah, I would say you know, but I've been all over the U.S., so I would say 
Louisiana was a pretty cool place for sandwich inspiration, like Turkey and the Wolf. Like they just came out with a cookbook that's really fucking sick, and it's only sandwich based. It's a really dope sandwich like spot exclusively, and they're just like super industry head forward, and they they blend like being super modest with like high level techniques. It's like if everyone at the friendly was like French trained. You know, oh, it's wow. like when they can just randomly just ball out, okay. but also just make turkey sandwiches too. So it's like, I wanted to make something that was like super approachable, fun, and just crushable where you yeah. want like two or three of them. But I would say, yeah, as it comes to experience wise and being exposed to food, like America has a lot to af- offer for sure, especially San Diego as it comes to like our our Vietnamese scene is is pretty good. I mean, LA people will argue with me, but you know, I don't live in LA, so <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, but there's a lot of good stuff to to point to here, and then pointing to the past, pointing to travels, and then pointing to our our own community. Yeah, it's always good. Would you say your passion, like your passion, is making sandwiches? Yeah. Okay. I would say so. Give me like. If you're making a sandwich for yourself at home, not something you're creating for another person, walk me through what you would make for yourself. Are, do, are you like super fancy or are you just like, yo, just mayonnaise sandwich, just like you said? Yeah, it depends on what I'm in the mood for, realistically. Sick. Yeah, so I'm like, if I have the time, then I'll try a little harder. And if I'm feeling like pulling out canola oil and dealing with that and then straining it and putting it back when I'm <laughs> done. So it just depends on how lazy I'm feeling, realistically. Because I, I put a lot of my effort into... Um, work and then the people that I'm going to serve. So it's like, I, you'd rather do it for somebody else yeah, rather than yourself. One of my toxic traits that is beneficial to others is putting others first b- before me and more so <laughs> toxic traits. And, Damn. Uh, yeah. Like, Yo. hey, we share sh- sh- that in common. Dude. Yeah. Yo, that's crazy. Okay. Constantly putting others first because that's, that's my, my love language is, is cooking and providing for others. Oh, that's your love language. Yeah, absolutely. Damn, I didn't see that one on the test. Yeah. <laughs> I need to check that. Yo. <laughs> I'm not too good at words, but yeah, cooking is fun. Cooking your like spot. Making people, and I, I'd say that's a part of like Hispanic and Spanish and Filipino culture is like overfeeding and overwatering people. Always. Realistically. So that's Dude. just something that's forced upon you and then you punish other people with that too in a good way <laughs> yeah it's like i would like punishing it's like i guess so yeah like dude, <laughs> like i have to eat this you're dude, gonna, like, keep eating you're gonna eat it like yeah, dude my grandmother she fucking i'd go over to like do the yard work and everything like that front yard backyard backyard was fucking huge and then i would make sure i ate before because i'm like i know she's gonna just try to make me eat when i get there <laughs> so i'd eat and then god no are you hungry like not grandma, I ate. Like, grandma, I ate. I'm good. Don't even worry about it. Go finish it. And then, like, I'm still going, still going. Gano, <laughs> come inside and eat. Like, oh, grandma, fuck. And I'm like, all right, let me just come now. All right, go in there, eat. And there's just like eggs, like, hot dogs, dude. and tortillas, Bro. or like <laughs> napales and beef and shit. 100%, dude. I'll go straight to my grandma's and I'm like, I'm good. You yeah. know, and it's like, no, feed it, fix them a plate. And I'm like, all right. Uh. <laughs> and it's usually it's eggs, fried weenies with bacon. Oh. Simple, dude. Fried weenies with bacon? That's not simple. She's, she's a beast. Ba- she she's bacon it. wrapping shit? Dude, like, yo. <laughs> I don't know how. It's done in five fucking minutes, though. Bro. Every time. It's Every just, time, and it's fire. And, like, the most lard in the beans. It's oh, that's what's popping. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that. But, dude, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, no, I completely agree with that. Like, mm-hmm. dude, yeah. It's it's also one of my fav- my most fondest memories, you know? It's like, I didn't want to eat, but, like, all right, Grandma. It's like, I will, yeah. Yeah, it's and then, like... Yeah, the other households you go to, you stay the night at, or, you know, like, the other communities you're raised by are, especially in San Diego, kind of share that same sense of, like, hospitality and, like, reciprocity. Yeah, especially with nice. Filipino culture. I Dude, mean, yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my friend Romeo, he... One year I was, like, in L.A. by myself. And he was like, bro, come over for Thanksgiving. I was like, no, 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 no. He's like, no, come kick it with my family. Went over there. Dude, they were like, eat, eat. Yeah, so dude. much so food. And, and bomb food, too. Filipino bomb. food is so good. Dude, yeah. yeah. What do you? What's your favorite dishes in Filipino food? Uh, I mean, mm. synagogue is always like. A pork, or, pork or shrimp? Pork. Every time. Always. Yeah, always. Yeah. Yep. I had something. I'm not too sure if it's specifically Filipino, but it's called okoy. Have you ever had that? No. no it's like a big fried ball, and it's got just tons of seafood in there. That's what? fucking weird, dude, but it's so good. Dude, that kind of sounds like a, there's a – fuck, I can't remember. I used to When I used to go to Hawaii all the time, they have this, like, 
banana leaf and you like uh you open it up and there's like steamed meat fish and like one other thing in there it's fucking bomb son. it's up. so yeah, dude. bomb because like filipino food and hawaiian food like cross over pretty sure tough. yeah yeah but like dude ponset you guys ever make yeah. Ponset? yeah ponset absolutely chicken long rice um synagogue i do I, lumpia the like yeah. you know and then there's like then there's some ones and there's like, like dinaguan there's things like that yeah have you ever dude, had Dinaguan? I don't know. Dude, well, I, I when like, uh, in my past life. It was fil- like heavily Filipino. Yeah, yeah. Or Kare yeah. Kare is really good, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Dude, chicken adobo. Yeah. Can't yeah, go all wrong. All adobos. Yeah. Dude, can't go the wrong. The rainbow of adobos. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Where's your Filipino spot? Like, do you guys go down to National City and get some food down there? I mean, there's always good spots down there. I mean, even yeah. on our street where we're opening. Yeah, I mean, and even almost like pretty close to around us, like Fred Cell, I would go to a lot in high school. Fred Sal? Fred Sal, yeah. It's like, it's the closest to like a sorry, sorry story, which is like a weird mix between like, well, most Filipino food is almost served cafeteria style, but it's like yeah. set within like a shop with a bunch of knickknacks and, and like snacks, you know? Uh-huh. So you can do like some minor grocery shopping and then pick up like the most stacked three entree plate of your life. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think it's like a mile in whatever direction. I always get university and El Cajon confused. But. It's like a North Gate then. Right? Yeah, but like super, like the size of the shop. It's oh, weird. shit. Oh. And it's like, you don't even bother calling the phone number. They're not going to answer. They make their own hours. So it's just like pull up whenever they say they're going to be open and just like try and go eat. And yeah. ha- hope they're actually open. Yeah. Because it's like, it's just legit family. I imagine they own the building. So I whenever they feel fuck like with cooking. that, dude. That's yeah. so cool. Dude, I. No I, pressure, good food. Yep. Yeah. Dude, that's what they do in Mexico. Like, my homies out in Tecate love them, but it's hella funny. They're like, Lo siento, today's hours. And it's like eight. <laughs> I've seen them sometimes like 10 a.m. <laughs> Bro, do you want to the barista bravos? Love them. Love them. But dude, on like Sundays, they're open from like 10 to 4. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is that? Like, yo, <laughs> well, like I mean, 10? Like, bro, like even, that's so late. Even when I went to Barcelona, the whole siesta, I was like, dude, I'm trying to eat right now. It was dude. like 2 o'clock and I was like, nothing's open. But see, okay, were you in like Barcelona proper? Because dude, in Barcelona proper, it doesn't really... The siesta thing doesn't... I mean, it kind of does, but it's not really... Like, for sure... But dude, when you go to like outer Spain, yeah, yeah, bro, they fucking be on that sea. Like nothing. Oh, nothing's open. It's open. It's like Sunday and TJ. Uh, Uh, Sometimes half of that, I feel like half the shit's closed. Maybe I don't know. I've been there during the week too. Yeah, and there ain't shit open. Sometimes (laughs) it's like, what the fuck, dude? Like, what's going on? Like, why is nothing (laughs) open? They just make their own hours though. That's but that's. I mean, I wish I could do that here. Yeah, it's kind of you know. I know that way now. It's like seven o'clock, but I'll look outside and I'm like, all right, nobody's out there. I'll just kind of like yeah, slowly like, okay, open yeah. up. You can, you, can, you get the feel. It's like yeah. seven ish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Especially when you've been in it for so long, you're like, I know when it's probably going to pop off or not. Yeah. yeah. It's like, as long as I'm open by eight. No, I'm just kidding. I don't do that. <laughs> but like, like, but uh, some days I think about it. I'm like, dude, just, just do eight o'clock. But I know if I actually set my hours to eight, my ass would be like seven 45 just showing up still. I'm like, ah, oh, it's ingrained, dude. Dude, it is. It's like, nah, you just have to extra time to sleep now. Just like a little bit longer. <laughs> like, you know, but yeah, those tired nights are just around the corner for you guys. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm approaching it. Yeah, dude, <laughs> I bet. So when you're coming up with the menu, what are you trying to get across, Brandon? Um, Mark and I were talking about this morning is like how to get across the Hispanic and like Filipino influence without like actively calling something like it's a bistec burger it's a longanisa burger it's like this and that so it's just like you know it's a it's a smash burger and it's like you know it's just a breakfast hand or like the mcriddle basically but instead of like your standard like honey or syrup covered sausage it's like a longanisa patty and all that stuff so like utilizing the ingredients that are more prevalent in the community that we grew up in and the community that we're going to be in so it's like it's still the same language that's approachable to the other people, you know, the more wasp influence people that are going to, to also give us their money. But we're entering a neighborhood that, you know, Marco and Aaron are actually from. I only briefly grew up in and still making it palatable for the people that are going to be walking by and, you know, coming into our home that is housed within their home, realistically. Nice. So it's like, and just making, you know, fire crushable shit. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It, 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 sorry, really quick. It's just funny because it, it, the word that you mentioned a lot too that we talk about is just approachability. Mm-hmm. Where it's mm-hmm. you want to be able to walk into a cafe that does offer maybe something that you've never seen, but you feel a hundred percent comfortable ordering it. Yeah, you know. I mean, I feel like 
uh, we probably experienced that a lot in specialty coffee early on, right? I mean, before the scene was really like kind of spread out, it, it felt a little bit, I felt personally really intimidating, like intimidated going into a shop that did have the reputation of like, you know, this espresso is bomb, this and that. We do things properly, but like if you didn't know, it felt kind of like, I, like I said, personally, I felt a little bit like, oh shit, like I'm kind of out of my element right now. Yeah. I had never experienced like, well, even if you told me like you're doing an espresso properly and I've never had a proper espresso and you're like kind of weird and condescending and like unapproachable in the shop. Like when I, the first time I ever went to Miami, that happened to me and I pulled up to the shop and I was like, just panic order an espresso. And I was like, all right, cool. And they give me this like water on the side with it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't understand it. <laughs> the sparkling water. Yeah, yeah. So I just like, I chug all the water first and I'm like, all right, cool. That was sick. And I have like the most insane espresso. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> But, like, without the education or just, like, approachability of it, too. Because, like, I, I would have asked a question if I felt more comfortable to ask that question, too. Mm. It's like, what is this? What's going on? Like, what's the deal? You know? Yeah. I mean, I would definitely I would definitely agree with that. I would definitely say approachability is one thing. Condescending the pretentiousness of coffee. LA. I, I, <laughs> I mean... I, dude, to be honest, I just was so excited about coffee and I would, if I don't know something, but I am excited about it, I just go. Yeah. I, I was, I wasn't so much intimidated. I was excited because I was like, oh, look at the way they did this one. You know, yeah. I thought it was so unique and so different because I'd never seen anything done like that. I mean, again, Zumbar Coffee and Tea, I talk about them at nauseum, but there's like so much difference in between both locations like the Sereno Valley location compared to the Cardiff location I remember the first time I saw Cardiff I was absolutely in love I couldn't fucking believe it I was like oh my god this place is beautiful it, it's so like white and it has these granite countertop like these like dark gray countertop and then they had this brown element which also reflected the Sereno Valley location but then I always just get excited to go check them out what bums me out is when I go up and introduce myself because that's I think the difference between you and I is mm-hmm. I'll go up to them and be like, yo, what's up guys? My name's Connor. I'm from San Diego. How yeah. are you going? Or like, or wherever I'm at. Yeah. If, even if it's in town, if I don't know them, I'll be like, Hey, how's it going? I'm Connor. I own caffeine and green. Yeah. Like I'm a coffee guy too. Like yeah. sometimes people are like, hi. Like, oh, like, okay. Sweet, so yeah. It's <laughs> like, so cappuccino in a shot. Or it's like, or sometimes it's like, Oh my God, like da, 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 yeah. so sick. Da, da, da. It's like, I don't know. That's how I interact with people. Yeah. But I think what just kind of blows my mind is how people offer different things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that actually is one thing that like, I kind of wanted to touch on cause you guys both said that you grew up, like you briefly lived in national city. You grew up in national city. So is that also another reason why you maybe wanted to open, open there? Like it was like, yo, there's nobody really down here at this moment. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, it's like, yo, we grew up in this neighborhood. Like, yo, that's like, that's what's popping. Yeah. I mean, I, so, I mean, it kind of grew up, in between so i kind of same thing with brandon just to kind of split family homes so i was going across that bridge right there above the 54 so i was on third avenue and then also on d avenue so it's oh you guys are on d no we're on eighth so i mean we're literally we're we're almost like three blocks away from my dad's house growing up what yeah so that's tight yeah so right down from kimball park you know so i mean growing up going by the skate park yeah dude yeah so i mean growing up going to the you know every single fourth of july festival there or carnival at at kimball park and then for real yeah dude every single one elote and everything elote yeah (laughs) and you know from but but just going back and forth though i mean and you you grow up and me and brandon were talking about how like we're hanging out in canyons and in trails and i think anyone that grew up south of the 54 can relate to that because there's not really much down there and we had to create everything on our own you know, whether it was DIY shows or fucking house parties or mm-hmm. tunnels, like, like, you know, raves under fucking bridges. Yes. I mean, all this shit, dude. The ramps. rave thing. Yeah. yeah. But finding that. but finding a home that we can, like, hone all that in and not mm-hmm. lose any of it, not lose any of our personality or rawness or, like, excitement for music or beer or fernet or anything that we're going to serve yeah. there. But, like, still. but Fernet? Yeah. Ew. I love Fernet. Dude, we, shut the we fuck love up. Fernet, dude. <laughs> People who love Fernet are just like, no, it's the fucking best. Like, dude, you're fucking lying to yourself, it's my so G. Nah, dude. <laughs> Wait till we have the Fernet on Nitro, dude. Yeah. Dude, get the fuck out of here. No. <laughs> Fernet Go on home. top, dude. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think that's going to really happen, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys are fucking hot. It's fun. Honestly. It's like the best, one of the best industry handshakes Yo, that, of all time. Dude, I will never let this, oh, this mother. 
His name was his name's Caleb. We were at a trade show in Long Beach when I because I used to work in action uh, action sports. And we're at this trade show, and then I see him at the bar, and he's lit. I'm lit. He's like, "Hey, let's take a fucking shot." I'm like, "All right, let's fucking go. Let's go." He's like, "I, I got it. I got it." I'm like, "All right, all right." He's like, "But you have to take whatever I'm buying you." Oh, and I was God. like, "Yeah." Oh fuck, it's gonna be like Jaeger or something like that. I already know. Which is and pretty close. D- I mean, yeah, like not not, not far off, yeah. yeah. But then he immediately he immediately yeah. hands me a shot, and I drank it, and bro, I swear I almost threw up because I was like, "What the." F- yeah. What is this? And he was all, it's Fernet. I was like, it's disgusting. And it tastes like licorice. I was like, it's good for your stomach. It's a, uh, it's a digestive. It tastes like, like Colgate and wine. It's weird, dude. That's a, I mean, that's a pretty accurate. Yeah. description. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the, like the West, West coast version of like Malort. Have you had Malort? No. In like Chicago. That's like, people have the exact same reaction affinity or like hate for it basically yeah dude do you, do you like limoncello no no see i don't like that shit either unacceptable yeah. dude i when i was in italy they like handed it to us uh for like i don't know just like hey you're american here you go try this <laughs> and fucking, i drank it and i was like Ugh. i was like what was that they're like it's limoncello it's, it's a digestive i was yeah, like fuck. No. No, no, like, <laughs> no. especially the ones that i've had are just like super sugary high viscosity dude I'm yeah like, mm-hmm. miss no, me thanks. with that please no thank you so why for net then I love it, dude. That's not even an answer, Brandon. <laughs> we, we, we just had it today, too. <laughs> you guys are so gross. It's just right like now. a super industry thing, you know. It's so like, industry. It's like Underberg. Underberg. Oh yeah, Underberg is yeah. great. Another great example. Do you guys want some more? Wine? Yes, please. Yeah, there you go. Okay, got you. Hold on one sec, guys. For everybody listening, I'm pouring a nice Côte de Rome. <laughs> it's a beautiful red wine. Because, like, if you're I don't know. This this might be common knowledge to a lot of people that are listening, but if it's not, then if you go to any bar and you're like, you're ordering Fernet and a High Life, you know, the champagne of beers or anything, especially Damn. coupled together. Classy. Yeah. They'll ask you if you're, you know, um, industry or not in any capacity. And it's like, don't lie to them, but, you know, just say that you like it. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Just say you like it. It's, yeah. it's like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> um, how did we get on that topic? Oh, we were just talking. Wait, yeah, how did we get on that topic? Approachability, right? Approachability. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, kind of just want to circle back on that, actually. I, You know, one thing, I was just having this conversation with a, a customer who walked in today. You know, have the morning rush. Morning rush is crushing. It was dope. And then it just mellows out, as it does, you know, for a coffee shop later in the day. But I had a guy come in today, and he was talking to me, and he's like, oh, I've been walking by this place. Like, thought I'd come in and try today, blah, blah, We were talking, and I don't remember what he said, but it basically... I was like, yeah, man, I, I don't want there to be any pretentiousness. Like, bro, honestly, you're coming in here. Uh, this is my shop. I'm the owner. There's a big ass, there's a big ass fucking mural of Nipsey Hustle with like face tats. I like, I have tattoos like obvious, like on my hand, on my neck, but you're not going to, and you're going to hear like some, either some gangster ass rap or some cumbias or whatever when you walk in, but there's never going to be like, ew, you know, there's not yeah. going to be like, don't talk to me. And it's yeah. like, no, bro. Like, why would I, a person who look like the way I do, who honestly, I mean, in today's world, it's fine. It's nothing. But like yeah. back in the day, it might be looked as like not approachable, right? Yeah. I mean, even in Starbucks, I had to cover all my stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I didn't get hired at Starbucks. I had forearm tattoos. Yep. And I was, that's all I want to do is work in coffee. But it's like you, when you're coming in here, bro, like the dude behind the counter has neck tats. I get it's this is fine. Yeah, like just come and say what up. Like you have questions, ask me. And and yeah. that's a hundred percent the point, dude. Like I mean, I, for me personally, if that my hiring process, I I want to hire within a ten mile radius because I want everybody oh. to who works in there to be a part of from or be from the community, right? Or be a part or be a part of it. And then also any customer that comes in, I want them to see themselves in the customer or into I mean in the worker. Do you know what I mean? So when you walk up to the counter, it's like someone that you could have kicked it with, someone that you could have grew up with, more so than like funneling people from up here or people that do have that coffee experience, you know? Mm-hmm. Like we can teach coffee to anyone. I mean, Brandon can teach anyone how to cook. Our whole point is that yeah. we just want to like, yeah, we want everyone to feel comfortable coming in, but they're still getting that elevated like taste experience, you know, with the same kick it vibes that we always have. Well, I mean, think about it this way too. And if you were to really just hire everybody, say everybody in there is like from a 10 mile radius, right? Especially in... Hispanic, uh, you know, Filipino neighborhood, stuff like that. Like if you're, you're like, you know, Tim got a job at friends of friends, mm-hmm. Tim is going to bring 
all his family and all his homies and same thing if you know sally got hired sally got hired and then like all her family's gonna pull up and be like oh my god i want to try this and then they're gonna tell their friends and their friends and it's like friends of friends of friends yeah. the word. you know yeah. what i'm saying damn yo did you think of it at that deep <laughs> yo i mean <laughs> if we really take a step back and look at all of our connections it's literally friends of friends so me and brandon never crossed paths until we met but we had friends that i mean my best friends are some of his best friends yeah but, but we, we just never knew each other. Yeah. Oh, like separation of six type stuff. Essentially. Yeah. 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 And then now we're opening a business together. Mm-hmm. That's what's You know, you don't, you'd always see each other and like know of one another and like nod or dap each other up and say, and like, you know, what's good. But then actively having run into each other, like at a baseball game, it's like, you know, we're both at very cool points in our life where it's like, I am open to speak about anything and do something else that we're, you know, we're, we're seeking something else out basically. So it's like, it just lined up really nicely. What made you want to make that jump though? Cause I mean, I know Marco's already like, he's done been in the coffee game. Like have, did you, have you worked in multiple sandwich shops? Have you like, have you been like working your way up in the cooking game to get to a point where you're like, no, I want to put yeah, on my spot. I've, I've been in the, um, I've been in the like culinary and restaurant and hospitality industry for since I was like 16, basically. How do you know? Oh, no. I just turned 28. A couple weeks oh ago. damn yeah okay seasoned vet yo, <laughs> yo. <laughs> almost yeah it's so like 12 years which is fun um but yeah i've worked in a lot of different kitchens you know for an extended period of time and doing a lot of really fun stuff and you know you don't want to there's a lot of people out there that like collect stages and like apprenticeships just because they want to be able to attach chef's names to their their resume and stuff like that but never actively try to seek an education or an understanding out so if you you're better off like sitting in a place that you actively enjoy for like a year two years three years and like really understanding why you love it or why you hate it you know so it's i've cooked a lot of different foods and i love a lot of different foods but i always come back to what i think my my childhood and like more approachable and attainable route is to be like sandwiches you know and it's like where i go kick it is like you know, the friendly or Jane Tony's is a good one. You know, anything that's attached to a really simple drink and a really fun, attainable sandwich in some capacity. So it's like, it was a burger mm-hmm. sandwich, it's a hot dog sandwich, you know, all that fun stuff. But oh, yeah. Oh, damn. Know, Next that, level thinking. That's right a whole other one. But yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that's where, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time in a lot of different, because I, I used to run a Filipino restaurant, I used to help open and run a Mexican restaurant and I worked at both of the stones for a very long time before they collapsed. What is it? Stone breweries. Oh, so, Oh, stones. Okay. Okay. Them, yeah. Before they, you know, did, they did their own thing. And then, um, yeah, I worked in the beer industry for a very long time. Oh. So yeah, I think testing it all out. My, my best example is like when people get a 16 ounce pour or something like a full pint of a beer, and they don't like it. Like they take one sip and they don't like it and they give it back. And I'm like, you're better off telling the person that you, you know, you don't really fuck with it, but then finishing it and, and understanding exactly why you don't fuck with it, which is like the same thing to finish your 90 days or to finish your year, you know, to truly understand why you do not like that thing. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I know. I don't think I've heard you say that. That's really good. I, dude, that's, <laughs> yeah. I was just about to say like, God. Damn, why yeah. don't you like Yo, it? Yeah. That was, that's a really good so analogy. I, I know exactly why I don't want to go back there or why I don't want to drink, you know, this specific like red ale or mm-hmm. whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Well, because I mean, sometimes, I mean, to your point, I would definitely say that sometimes, you know, that first sip, nah. Mm-hmm. And then you like, you keep getting into it. And then especially if it's like a stronger beer, like dude, like halfway through it, you're like, eh. It's not that bad, but you're like at that initial sip, you're like, ah, nah. Yeah, you know? especially even tasting foods like Chef Jeremy Fox, like Rustic Canyon, Birdie Cheese. He'll he'll try things with like four spoons. As far as I know, that's been described to me. He's like, he'll bring four spoons, try it four times, and then he'll form like a way better, more articulate opinion of it. It's like even with coffee, I never worked in coffee until you know I came on to help with the kitchen where Marco and I are at right now attached to the coffee shop and trying a drink. I'm like, I'd, every time barista asks me, I'm like, freestyle something, use the film to draw a dick, whatever it is. <laughs> like, oh, we're good at it. Yeah. Dude, I, dude like, I bet you are. <laughs> I bet he is for sure. Oh, I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, be expressive in both ways. So it's like, if you add that elevated, like, I don't really care what you draw, but like adding that extra 
portion to the sentence will make you be more relaxed into what ingredients you're going to use at the beginning of your liquid sentence that I'll end up trying. So mm -hmm. I love tasting stuff. I love eating stuff. It's I mean, yeah. even with, with the whole four spoon thing, I think I told you a while ago when I used to dial in, I used to dial in for espresso, for long black. I had never heard that term before either. What? Yeah. Dialing in. in. I was like, well, all right. Oh, yeah. That's a, yeah. That's a very common yeah. term. Yeah. Dude, I had to say, I'm <laughs> dialing in. I was, I was, but yeah. I think I might have mentioned that on this podcast before. I mean, just like thinking in all different mindsets, right? You have someone that's going to come in and drink a Spro. And if you have a Spro that, I mean, it could be a bomb Spro on its own, but then you throw it in with milk with a cap. It doesn't, it doesn't resonate. Oh, bro. My shit is definitely like, do mochas or like mushroom lattes. Yeah. My, my espresso is like on point with Money. It yeah. Because it just amplifies the chocolate. Yeah. By itself, it's good too, but it's definitely yeah. like more of a traditional taste. Yeah. Versus so. if you're looking, I mean, if you have like a super, you have a natural Ethiopia, right? You have something that's super fruity, super wild, like out there. Mm -hmm. It might be great on its own and as espresso and super unique. But the minute you throw it into Cap or Gibraltar or anything like that, Gross. it might just be like, oh, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And, but when you dial with the mindset of like, well, this person might get a cappuccino, this person might get this. So let me adjust my specs. Maybe like pull back on a little bit of this fruit, fruitiness and you know push forward on a little bit of like that chocolatiness maybe like down temp you know so that you don't over extract or maybe you up temp and you want to extract shit or maybe you want to change pre-infusion or i mean this is san ramo shit that's yeah. that's, that's yeah ramo. you but, can't pull that on my mom <laughs> but i get what i know what yeah. you're saying but, but like, it's yeah. like really like i mean even now at public square though getting every single barista in that mindset where it's like my dial in is different from your dial in mm -hmm. but they're both great dial ins we're not going to sit here and split hairs about like, it needs to be like this. Yeah. How yeah. approachable you want your liquid to be for yeah. that day. You know, like the Marcos of the world versus the guy that just came in that's dodging. He's mm -hmm. like, you know, this might be really good. I think anyone, you said that's the second time you said that. I didn't know what you meant the first time. Uh, staging. What is it? It's like it's French for like apprenticeship, like a stagiary. Ah, yeah. A so stagier. it's like uh, an unpaid working shift so that you can understand if you want to work there or not. So it's like, if you think you want to work at like the French Laundry or something like that, and you happen to know someone that can like get you in there, then you go work for them for a day, several days, like unpaid at a time. So it's like you're, it's like you're unpaid. helping them. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, it's nuts, good old uh, interning. You know. I feel like that's par for the course though for food, right? Yeah, it's pretty. I have been told this before. I have heard that. It's but pretty it, standard for food. Yeah. Okay. Like you wouldn't do it at like a Jack in a Box or a Carl's Jr. or Hardee's yeah. or anything, but. But yeah. when I, yeah. I mean, even Chef Kyle, when I used to work there at yeah. Ironside he was there from 11 to 11 mm -hmm. and he wasn't on the clock yep. I mean the guy was there prepping cleaning just doing shit dude well I yeah. mean he was probably salaried though right I don't think I so no probably not at that time yeah not at that time yeah he wasn't head chef there's like a weird level of of excellence that you want to impart upon yourselves and have be noticed about yourself so that you can succeed and ingrain yourself into that exact team it's weird. Kitchens are really weird. Have you ever seen the menu? That one movie that just came out? Yeah, I did. It's pretty good. I fucking was super down. Pretty for accurate. It. Was it really? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's. They really were down. They were just down for the yes, chef. Yeah, yeah dude. There's, there's there are kitchens that are you know that's obviously like a gross over exaggeration of it for the sake of. Is like, it really though? I mean, have you watched Chef's Table? There's some fucking crazy no, chefs yeah, on there. No, like. it's pretty accurate, but like no one's gonna, as far as I know, kill themselves in the middle of the dining. Room. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was gonna say the one homie just fucking off himself. Yeah. I know a lot of guys that say they want to, but they're joking, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, dude. but yeah, that's basically what stage is. So it's like you're you're able to go in and like gain some experience and help out a team or a restaurant that you um, really respect basically. So it's like, yeah. I've even gone on vacation and our friend like Channing, he's like, we've gone on vacation and just like done a shift at like a restaurant for no reason, you know, it's just like, but you have to really yeah. like it. It's yeah. just like going to visit a restaurant. Like you, you plan your travel to go visit a coffee shop or a restaurant or something like that. And you're like, you know, if you can, it's, it's almost the same as like sitting at the chef's counter or sitting directly behind the, you know, the espresso machine and like talking to them about how they're dialing in and like picking up and learning something that might benefit you in the future. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to your point too, I'm going to Miami in April. First time. It's mm -hmm. fun. It might as well be a different country. Honestly, that's what everybody tells me. Yeah. And, uh, I've never been anywhere that's more like hypersexual or like really excellent all different hispanic foods and drinks no kidding hypersexual very mm. interesting <laughs> yeah because i went i back then it was like 
I mean, that's classic though, right? Miami. Yeah. yeah. It just makes sense. Cause the weather's too good. It's like, it's too fucking hot. And then everyone might as well be nocturnal. Cause you don't want to be awake during the day. It's like a hundred degrees and like a hundred percent humidity. So it's like bars and restaurants open at 6 PM and stay up until 4 AM. Jesus. So it's like, I'd get in trouble weird. there, dude. Yeah. But it's fun. <laughs> it's, it's a really cool place. It's, <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah. Dude, you'll never see anything like it. Do you have anyone in, anywhere in particular you're going to? Or? Well, I was, I mean, as f- I just know I'm going there. Uh, for, as far as coffee goes, I'm going to be going to Panther Coffee. Yeah, Panther. My homie used to work there. Is it dope? Yeah, he said it was great. I mean, I mean, they're on it. Dials, I mean, Spro's good. Batch is good. I mean, from, from what he says, it's all secondhand. But um, I do know that they're, I mean, definitely no shade. But from what he said, it's still like that strict mindset, you know? That strict kind of like coffee you know, purist kind of not, thing. not, I mean, well, I guess I couldn't say that. Cause like, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm strict, but I'm not, I'm definitely not strict. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't know how strict it, like how you are here, but I mean, at public square, it's pretty like, we're not strict per se, but I mean, everyone that's touching that machine needs to know like what they're doing. Oh, that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I, I mean, I mean like even our newest baristas now are starting to like ask about temperature, you know, ask about like, you know, is this yield good enough for this dry dose that I'm doing? That's so weird. The place that I had my first, like, espresso and, like, chugged that tonic was at Panther. No kidding. That's so weird. <laughs> Damn. Because I got off the plane, and that was the first place that was open in the morning yep. because I had to wait. Well, there you go. That kind of lines up then. Yeah, weird. Yeah. yeah, let's pull up. Very <laughs> good. It was excellent. I just had no idea what I was doing. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Dude, fucking it. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. I can't wait to go there. It's going to be... It's going to be an experience for sure. I definitely want to check it out. Every single person that I've talked to, they're like, oh, it's your first time. You're going. They're like, you're going to like So I've heard more than one person say, I'm going to fucking love it. Uh, number th- The third person I s- told it to, they're like, oh, you're going to be able to speak Spanish. <laughs> they're like, yo, you, that's where you're going to practice your Spanish for sure. They're like, <laughs> yeah. it's not even, they're like, it might as well be a different country. It's yeah. like, it's not really United States over there from yeah, what I've been it's told. It's such a trip. Yeah. Dude. People are like, have you been on the East Coast? I'm like, well, technically, but not really. No, because that's almost, yeah, it's, it East, doesn't compare to anything. East Coast in itself is so crazy, dude. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, can, like. Dude, I love the East Coast. Yeah, dude. If I'm going to do New York. New York's insane. <laughs> Did you guys I, grow up skating? No? Nah, you? homie's been on me. I, I, I was longboarded. Okay. Or like nickel board or penny board or yeah, anything. Yeah, same here. I, I, I was able to kick it with them, but in yeah. terms of skating, like, nah. No, I never I was going to say, yeah, like kicking it in like canyons and shit. It's like, dude, I was just out skating, but. Yeah, um, I was just cruising. I always yeah. pushed fucking Goofy or Mongo, so that was always an issue too. Dick was pushing. Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 dick pushing. I was like, my feet just don't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that, the canyon hangouts and things, that's always after everyone's done skating. We're like, all right, cool. Now we can actually kick it. Oh, like yeah. go drink some beers and shit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with and the like, homies those those things are like always a crucial part about like um creativity and expressiveness too it's like that we don't want to have go away you know but it's like also offering the reprieve from those things that we wanted you know as we were teenagers and growing up too yeah it's like i don't want you know the weird skate park underneath the the alleged north south yeah you know freeway that always comes and goes like be a generation to go away but you know, having an area for someone to stop in as you're skating past the now demolished, you know, Qualcomm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, did I used to love skating over there? Yeah. It was so fun. It's fun. One of our homies, a coworker is actually, uh, near that area. Kind of, they're doing their own DIY thing. I've heard. Yeah. I've heard about it. I mean, like, I don't really want to put it on blast too much, but mm-hmm. I've been hearing something, some stuff that's going yeah. on there's a little, over there. There's a little avocado bowl down there. Dude. The thing is that it used to be Snatch Park. Yeah, the, back the, the in the back day. Back in the day. Yeah, that's like Bones Brigade type area, right? Bro, okay, I'm not that old shit. Like, nah, <laughs> homie, oh, that's no, no, like 30 no. years before me. No, no, like, but Bones, there was one under Mission Valley, right? No, that's that uh, Mission Valley. No, well, it was at Qualcomm. So. Oh, I'm thinking of one there was under Mission Valley. That was like Bones Brigade area, uh, era, I think. I don't know about that, but when Qualcomm, there was Qualcomm, and then there was... Uh, like the back area where like the 24 hour fitness was. If you went back there and you went under the bridge, there was like, it was like people would be tagging. So mm-hmm. that's, that's where it's at. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I figured. Yeah. Um, but bro, they were getting hella crazy with it. Like I remember when it was just like a broken down car and maybe like a, like a, 
like a cinder block ledge. And then it started getting a cinder block ledge and then somebody built a quarter pipe and then the quarter pipe and then they like built out bowl and shit. Like, bro, it started getting crazy. It was like yeah. a mini Washington street mm-hmm. and it was so dope. You just get so broke the fuck off there. <laughs> like it was so, do- it was just the best thing ever though. Like, dude, there was, Oh, they built like a mat, like a fucking quarter pipe that went super flush with the wall. So it was just this able to go big up. ass yeah. wall ride, bro. <laughs> and, and then somebody like a little bit farther built another quarter pipe. So it was flush. But dude, I remember like if you didn't get it right sometimes and you just caught the trend, like the, the, like the concrete at the bottom, you could just still eat shit. Like you'd make it and like go across the wall and then just clip boom. And then just like, <laughs> fuck, you know, like, so you're like on the way back down, you have to lean back a little bit to yeah. like roll through. But I mean, man, but it I, was, it was fucking dope. I feel like that's got to add to it though. Right. I mean like that, like the, the griminess, like the, the, you know, like even like small little hiccup, things like that little. Oh dude. Yeah. No, yeah. that makes it, that's. Dude, I was in, do you know, you guys don't skate, so never mind. You guys probably won't know who this is. Uh, there's this guy, like, he's a pro skateboarder. We'll just say he's one of the biggest hit in the world. He and he, we were in, I was in Denver one time chilling with my homie Joey Abarca. Shout out to Joey. He, uh, he's like, yo, come to me, come with me, like, meet me in downtown. I'm with this guy and uh, Tyler and a couple other guys. And I was like, fucking, he's there? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, all right, bet. So we pull up to the bar. We're hell escape. Like we're getting drunk. We're having a good time. This dude's from Australia, and I'm talking to him, and he's like, "Hey, mate, where are you from?" And I was like, "I'm fucking San Diego," and he's like, "Ah, your spots fucking suck." And I was like, <laughs> "What?" I was like, "Bro, where the fuck are you from? Australia? Where are you live now? L.A. Fuck out of here with this. Like, oh, sorry, you're like." perfect ass spots are up in LA. You want like the real shit. You got to come to San Diego. Yeah, dude, there's like legendary spots down here. Bro, there was, but least, like, right? I mean, no, nah, there definitely is. But at the same time, like the one thing I will say, the one thing that everybody talks about San Diego is like our, our spots are fucking crusty. Wes oh, Kramer, yeah. King of crust, you know, like they are crusty, but at the same time, if you can't skate them, that says more about you, bro. Like, so like, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, is that falling like Carlsbad gap. Is that in that one of those that they used to be? Oh, it used to be. For yeah, sure. right. Carlsbad yeah. gap was fucking tough. Tough, bro. Yeah. Carlsbad Gap was... It was like a legendary one, right? Yeah, but yeah. it was weird because... It, it, yeah, it was a big gap, but you could definitely jump down it. But what made it was weird was that when you landed, it was uphill. Mm. So you it's like not super uphill, but it was like this steady descent. So when you landed, you're already going upwards. So, I mean, and plus it was it was sketch where yeah. like at the bottom, they had this like, like, a, like a concrete wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So normally when like you could like ollie and you could just kind of land at the bottom of it like no you had to go extra fast to clear the wall at the bottom too so when dudes did it like they like stomp their shit like tom penny like switch front i remember just seeing a bunch of videos dude just back in the day dude tom penny switch fronts i flip i'm pretty sure sorry if that's wrong anybody who's skates uh eric ellington backside big spin dude brandon turner b fucking b turner from skate mafia from here in san diego yeah switch hard flip Like, stop it. It was so perfect. (laughs) You know, it's just like, I think someone, maybe Danny way back three did or like the stairs or something, but it's like, dude. Yeah. I think all I ever did was all it just to like, say I did it. Yeah. And that was, I might've kick flipped it. I honestly don't remember, but like, yeah, dude, definitely an Ollie, but it was a lot. Like when you land, you feel it in your front leg when you should definitely should just be like, yeah, straight down straight. Yeah. You know, but yeah, Carlsbad got for sure. Snatch park was Mm -hmm. definitely one of them. Uh, What's I mean, uh, is El Capitan a thing? What is that? Oh, okay. that's, a, the, that's like a school, right? Yosemite. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> <I> was <laughs> like, yeah, like the school, like yeah. stair set. Like, I'm not too sure. Oh, I mean, I feel like yeah. that'd be your alley. But wait, how do we get to the? This? How do we get to skating? Well, was it? Oh, like I mean, like the the random little, <laughs> like the the what is it? Like the trail hangouts and all that sort of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, digress, yeah, digress. Yeah, okay, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> but it, yeah, but it essentially bringing that that idea, but harboring it into a space where it's, I mean, you can, you can do it all and you're not having to find this little dirt trail to do it at. And it still feels the same way. Do you, do you guys plan to like incorporate with each other? Because you guys are going to cross over, mm-hmm. right? Like your coffee shop will be open. I'm assuming it'll like probably the bar will shut down at like, what, like four or five. Are you going to stay open all day? No, not at all. No, um, yeah, definitely. Marco. No way. We're not going to work together. Fuck nope. This <laughs> Fuck this guy. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, no, coffee service. will will definitely see like early on in the day. Oh, it will. Yeah. Okay. Same with Wi-Fi. Same with things like that. I mean, I, I, I don't want to push people away, but at the same time, I, w- I do want to create a space where it's not laptop heavy at 6 p.m. 
I want people to go in there and have a beer and have a burger and kick it, listen to music. I mean, that's the point. Okay. You know? Cool. And what time do you think you're going to start, Brandon? Um, probably an hour after him. More than likely. Oh, wow. Yeah. So no real crossover then? Uh, I mean, We're midday. Take, yeah. I mean, yeah. Because I want to take um, probably like 8 to like 1, one thirty, And then there's a gap, like a two-hour gap. So that we can start back up for like a late lunch into dinner. Service. Oh, you're going to be open all day. Yeah. You specifically. Mm-hmm. You're going to switch from breakfast to lunch? Yeah. Oh, wow. Definitely. And then, um, yeah, starting from 3, going to nine ten. So hopefully you can run re- like from a labor standpoint and like people's, you know, mental health. You can run a six-hour shift of actual service and then an hour on the front and an hour on the back to like set up the shop and then close down the shop. So it's like, it's technically a traditional eight with six hours of actual work. Yeah. You know, at quote unquote actual work. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. My mo- like, that's how I said, I've started to realize because I didn't work in restaurants, but I worked in cafes, but I never really realized that that hour prep or the hour after mm-hmm. that's definitely one thing I've been learning about yeah. personally. It's a lot, especially if it's like, you know, you can't come in and like, yeah, I'd actually have to do a shift with you. I'd yeah. love to understand that because it's not like you're coming in like pattying beef, draining blood, like setting up, turning on fires, making sure the pilot lights are turning on, being actively paranoid about like, the, like you guys are obviously actively paranoid about your own stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, it it translates for sure. But when you have a larger menu that requires more of your body, I would say, and an entire line full of tools and heat I mean, sources. yeah, you're definitely working with a lot more shit than we are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and your knives and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. I need to sharpen my knives oh, by, yeah. by Thursday. What do I do? How do I have to buy like a piece of like material? Like a, a uh, equipment if you want to do it yourself, I would get stones and then a honing rod. But we have a guy actually um, that we go to that we can give you after. I'm <laughs> yeah. down, please. He's super. I'm super down. And quick, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. an hour. Yeah, Dude, easy. Yeah. Bring him some coffee. Good Say less, my yeah, G. Like, let's go. Like, <laughs> let's yeah. go. Another iteration of Friends of Friends, though. Yeah. I'm fucking yeah. so... Dude, the more and more we were talking about this, the more and more I'm falling in love with your name. Not that I didn't think of it, like, yeah. think of it as four, but I'm, one thing for me, especially being from marketing, like, I mean, <laughs> caffeine and green, right? That's, mm-hmm. like, what it is. So mm-hmm. when I think of your name, it's, like, Friends of Friends. It's, like, oh, it rolls off the name easy. It's catchy. Mm-hmm. I can imagine, like, some sort of graphic where, like there's something interlinked. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That just says it to me. Like something in their graphic is interlinked. I don't know what your logo is, but it was actually a fun explanation when you told me, cause I didn't, I didn't really have a logo already. Yeah. Yeah. It's so if you look at the the Instagram, so there is that logo that's kind of our head. Um, so it's funny the, the logo itself, when you really piece it down together, there is two F's in there. So there's a two, there's an F in the beginning an F on the end. And then there's the O in the middle, which is kind of like a diamond. So if you look at it reading across it's F O F. And then it's also an homage to Public Square, right? I mean, this wouldn't exist without Public Square or Aaron. So always forever grateful. And then... Yo, shout out to that guy. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. He, he's out here around here somewhere. But um, yeah, and then when you really take a step back and look at it from an aerial view, it's the square in the middle. You know, the O is our shop. And then the streets around it are all the other lines that are it. So, yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's dude. like the crow's view. Is that fucking Aaron's up. idea? That was no. fucking Aaron's idea, huh? <laughs> that was me, dude. That was yeah, you? Yeah. Well, because that was, dude, when he came on the show, he broke down how Public Square was designed. And yeah. he's like, dude, if you look at, like, he was talking about even, he's like, even the fucking, the things that come out of the wall yeah. and, like, all the lines, he's like, everything points to the register. And he's yep. like, I did that shit on purpose. It's very yeah. intentional. Yeah. Dude, yeah. And even the, the You Matter to Me wall or like the You Matter to Me at Public Square, you know, that, that slogan that's everywhere and all that. Like at first I thought I was like, yeah, like, of course you matter to me. And Aaron really breaking it down about like how everyone is matter when you break it down. Right. We're all pieces oh, of matter. Deep, and we're all like, further. you matter to me. Like, I mean, you know, kind of just like that. You really can't function without the other. I never really realized like that aspect of it because like we all like slash love and also, you know work deeply with one another but the weird idiosyncrasies that we all have that like brought us together too Mm -hmm. for us all being very different from one another you know Mm. it's like that's pretty cool yeah that's sick because like have you been into the you haven't been into the space in a year then you said right dude it's been a year exactly for tomorrow yeah because like the even the walls for wavy like the restaurant like i wanted it to be 
I don't like hard lines, like hard 90 degree angles, like everything. Like Interesting. When, yeah. It's okay. Like, when you walk into it, it should be, it should flow more and not be like intrusive or obtrusive, obtrusive, like pointing at you, if that's even a word. But it's like the walls all wave and they sink into the actual next natural wall, like as a concave. So it just kind of like exists naturally. Whoa. It looks yeah. nutty, dude. Dude, I have to see this now because I, I only saw – it was bare bones. Like yeah. the only thing that you guys really had was the roasters. Yeah. And that was kind of it. But the, the graffiti was up. Mm -hmm. Like the painting and shit yeah. around it was really cool. And then he was just like, this is where the bar is going to be. And he – dude, I mean even the mod bar was like straight up just like off to the side. Yeah. like. I was very surprised and he was just like, yeah, this is what this is. And he's like, these are the fucking windows. He was so stoked on the windows, which I mean, now yeah, that I've been opening a shop, I'm like, damn, I wish I could just have like some fucking windows right there. But, like <laughs> if yeah, I was going to be in this building for more than like what the time I am, I would definitely be investing in like some fucking fold up windows yeah, and dude. like, dude, Aaron, Aaron put some, put me on game with the fold up windows. Yeah. That's going to be that's, his, that's his be vision is insane. I mean, like, he helps me like realize like my vision you know, where I'm this like, Oh problem. shit. Like that's actually, we can do it. You know, like, Oh, like we want to put the staircase here eventually. Cool. Let's do it. We want to make a listening bar. Fuck. Cool. Let's do it. You know, Jay Z said difficult takes a day. Impossible takes a week. I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude. Like hey, you put your fucking, you put your mind to it. Anything is fucking possible and yeah. i don't care what anybody says like i don't know you know it's like you guys know the secret you know what the secret is yeah you know, the book fucking yeah. yeah the book the fucking book like these people <laughs> you know never heard of the secret like mm -hmm. will it into existence and yeah. stuff no. like manifestation manifestation and, oh. all this stuff it's a hey, i believe in that yeah i do yeah I but do i it think anyway I didn't yeah, know it was a yeah book. exactly That's right <laughs> but like the thing that they played the the secret as was like it was like this fucking end all be all like if you just sit and will it into existence like and imagine yourself in it it's gonna appear here mm -hmm. sure that's half the battle but it's like yo you gotta fucking you have to manifest it and see it and do it and then go out and take action and do it more yeah be prepared you, for be it. prepared yeah. like because you know what is it like um luck is just when preparation meets, meets opportunity. opportunity yeah it's like bro that's every day i mean that literally is sums up mine and aaron's relationship i mean every single piece that I, that's happened to me that's been good has been like that, like opportunity meets, you know, what did you say? Opportunity yeah, meets pre preparation, yeah, preparation. Meets preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, opportunity I, meets preparation. I didn't realize how much I was preparing for all of this. And then when it finally came down to it, I was like, Oh shit, you know, this opportunity is here. I know how to do this. But bro, this is exactly like, this is exactly what we we're fucking talking about when yeah. you're in the shop. It's like when we, it's just like skateboarding, you know, the, the better you get, the higher up in the game that you get, the circle continues to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And like, I've been in coffee for eight years now, something like that. And are going on eight years, something like that. Fuck. I don't know. It's been a long time, closer to 10 years. And we were talking, this is what we were talking about is that how long have we been in this game? You've been in probably just the same amount or just a little bit longer. Yeah. And we've known each other for, I probably Years met now. you, uh, yeah, like yeah. right when I got into coffee or maybe a year in or something like mm -hmm. that, right? We start to see the people who are coming up, coming up, and they fall off. But how many of the people that we kicked it with or have been on podcasts with or whatever are still there? Me, you, Siri Simran, Jay, Spromy, Asa. Asa, Like yeah. fucking, there's that's, not a, there's not a lot there's of not there. a whole lot yeah. of the people that we had like come up with. And if they are, there's a couple like my homie Grant, from uh from he started at Zumbar. He's like a roaster for Stumptown up in Portland. Yeah, and the other homie uh, Gerardo, he does Provecho. So, dude, yeah. I don't know yeah. him. I don't know if I know him personally, but like, I just started. He just started following me, and his like personal page started dude, following. He's me. the homie. He yeah. would definitely be a great guest. Okay, from Provecho because he's, he's just doing pop ups, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he's also. I mean, he's a good. I mean, he's worked in kitchens. He's worked with Chef Phil. He's, yeah. He worked with me at Lofty. He was one of the supervisors there when I was the GM. And it would basically he? be like talking to one of us. He's, yeah. He's a lovely person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really. He, you're a lovely person. <laughs> I think so. Okay. <laughs> no, but, I mean, I, he, mean, I think he is, and we're pretty similar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize how similar we were until we started. Well, just in a lot of ways. Where yeah. I'm like, yeah. Fucking Especially sound when, check. You guys should have heard him. Like, you guys will never hear the sound <laughs> <laughs> but They sounded exactly My the same. My ears are weird, too. Like, I can match. Same. Like, voice. 
the really weird thing. Like same thing. Like my my addiction to music is is pretty heavy as well. Yeah. Like the the same. actual like wavy the walls that I was describing came from almost directly ripped from like Tyler the Creator's like pop up of his of his Gulf LaFleur shop that he did like in, what was it like the hills of Beverly Hills yeah like, it was like somewhere really random yeah yeah it was like super green area but it was like it was basically what I would describe as like French Flintstone so French was, Flintstone yeah, yeah pretty much yeah so it's like weird pebbly concrete like Roman like like granite but also rounded out not harsh edges like it obviously required some effort you know otherwise you could just build a box you know I have to show you a picture of that actually, but that was like my main one. So, French, French, Flint, French Filipino Flintstone was my addition to that too. Yeah. So I was like, and it's off of an album, based off an album. Um, it's off of a pop up that that he did after his album, after he did "Call Me If You Get Lost." Damn. Yeah. That's fucking real, dude. I love that. Yeah. I fucking th- love that because mm-hmm. that's what everything here is based on. I just came up with a name for the new coffee that I'm doing today with um, Kilo Libra, a coffee shop over in Tecate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's based off, like, dude, just like my Ben Deshones bag is based off the Bad Bunny song. The Issa blend, which is my espresso blend, is based off 21 Savages' mm-hmm. Issa album. Hell yeah. Uh, Victory Lap, I did a coffee off of Nipsey. Yeah. El Cajon Boulevard's off the Crenshaw album. That's like, dude, literally everything I, I put out has something to do with like either a song or a hip hop album or just something in those like, and then plus everything in here, bro. Like it's my fucking, we'll definitely share that for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm already, we're, we're, I'm talking now with Noah about lean and creating like a name for the blender for the, you know, for something that's gonna be our most consistent thing. And it is all music referential. It has to be, or just like slang, you know, you know, where I think the one I'm rolling with right now is a coffee way. Just, it's coffee, coffee way, way like yeah. seaway yeah uh, it's just coffee way that's it <laughs> you you need to learn some spanish bro but you need me. to learn some spanish like just un poco oh like, for sure dude on. but i mean like you know just poking i mean that's that's shit that we say to each other growing up i mean yeah. i have homies that are like you know what's up way what's up way <laughs> you know i mean it's just and you know it's just like it's casual I love for it. me just, yeah. yeah i love it i love it yeah bro, whether it's like you yeah. know like neta way or like you know anything oh like, dude it's just like, what i'm saying like what's popping what's good yeah yeah exactly but I think what's, uh, dude, what's really fun is adapting when you're learning like a new language. Like I remember when I was like a year ago and I really started like committing to speaking Spanish like every day, I was like, yo, how do you say what's popping in Spanish? And my homie's like, there's no direct translation. <laughs> yeah, he like, could just say, exist. que onda. And yeah. I was, so now I'll be like, yo, what's up, que onda? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more your afflection. Yeah, yeah, it's just how you're saying it, right? Yeah. So, but I could be like, que onda, wey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. <laughs> <laughs> but everything yeah we'll dude. still have that touch of like kind of like how you dude i mean it's there's no way like that it's not gonna leak into what we're doing that's popping no, yeah. dude no, i fuck with it that's tight i mean even on the wall we're gonna have a direct quote from like one of my my favorite band ever yeah I mean, yeah i mean the, the quote things on the wall is definitely a thing yeah dude uh luis Recento, i don't remember what his says but it's something about tequila or mezcal it's mezcal uh, you know have you have you met luis from Asento? no what Really? I've been to Asenta, though. You've been there? Yeah. Yeah, Luis is the owner. He was actually just on... Um, yeah, yeah, I did like see that. Like two weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. I, I did like a skate one. We're doing like a new podcast, me and my homie Danny. Uh, so we had like skate. We're going to have like more skate-centered people, I guess. Centric. Like Tommy Sandoval type things. Dude, that's so funny. You, oh, do you know who he is? Yeah. Dude. He's a Chula Vista legend, bro. Bro, he's a fucking legend in general. Do you know how good at skateboarding that oh, is? Oh, no, for <laughs> sure. Yo, like, for real, for real. Like, But I mean, just growing up, you're like, oh, yeah, Tommy Sandoval. Dude, yeah. it's fucking Tommy Sandoval. Yeah. Tommy guns, baby. <laughs> yeah, T-Guns. <dude. laughs> Tommy guns. Bro, I want to get him in here to spin. Oh. Yeah, because he DJs. No shit. Yeah, he spins records. Super irie. Like, I think his, his, uh, I think it's like Dr. Roots. I think is this shit like a uh, fucking we need to get the the white wine, by the way. Oh, yeah. I'll get that for you. Uh, let me see here. I think it's Dr. Roots. Let's see. The DR. Yeah. Do- our Roots Doctor. Roots Doctor. He's the Roots Doctor. And he spins some Irie shit, bro. Like straight up just dub. Hell just yeah. Irie shit. All records, too. And it's. Oh, dude. Fun. I mean, we'll have to. I know. That'd be cool to get him in the shop. Dude, yeah. I'm yeah. going to get him in here. And then, like, uh, Vinyl Club. 
Winal Club is definitely like, dude, is Winal Club starting back up? Have you been to Winal Club yet? So the one at Morley? Yeah. 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 No, Actually, I haven't been, but... You haven't been? No, I, I haven't either. A lot of people have <laughs> yeah. come and bought wine for me. Like when I sold, like, you know, they're like, oh, I'm like, what are you doing today? I'm like, what's good? And they're like, oh, it's... I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, it's Wano Club see. Wednesday, baby. Yeah. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, I definitely need to get in contact with them, too. Um, Dude, I got you the contact. I yeah, got yeah, you yeah. the contact with him. But, I mean, also G, right? I mean, I, I, the whole thing with this is, like, spreading that love, right? Dude, so, like, can we, I just want to say G's name. His name is Ibran. Ibran. I yeah. fucking love his yeah, name, dude. but G is also so sick. So, yeah. Anyways, he's a sorry. G, dude. He's he a is a G. Yeah. Dude, when I watched him, I was like, what's poppin', G? He's like, what's up? I was like, what's your name? He's like, G. I was like, <laughs> I you literally just became my favorite person ever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a he's a dope guy. I mean, his vision that he he created. I, I I'll, I won't lie. I mean, when I first met him, he shared it, and I was like, dude, I don't know. You know, I don't know if that's uh, that's not my thing. You know, dude, he's so stylish though. He can pull it off. Dude, style he, is everything. He G. killed it, man. I mean, mm. like the the build out. I mean, the quality of what they're serving. Bro, the, his shit was tight before it was even built out when it was on crates. I know. It was such a fucking vibe in there, bro. He's a he's a huge inspiration for me. I mean, just to even be like a I don't know, a contemporary with him, you know, just to be around like to have a business open the same time he's having a business. I mean, to me that feels really cool. I mean, with anyone, right? That's our homies like Bro, I put them on all the time when people ask oh, me, oh, I like, tell yo, people to go there all the time. I now. tell people to go there all the fucking yeah. time. They're like, "Yo, where do you like to go?" I'm like, "Where do I like to yeah. long play hi-fi?" Yeah. Like straight up. Go but there. At the same time too though, like so when we open, I want to be able to share that love too. Always. I mean, you even you come to public square, we're always pushing people to go to here, to go to Hawthorne, to go to Scrim. I mean, all yeah. all the homies, you know. 100. Yeah, so always. I, I would hope that the 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 scene is that that way as well. And I I have confidence that they are. I mean, I want to be able to share selectors, share, you know, I don't know. That's my ideas. favorite part about like bartending and stuff too is like if I find out that, you know, you're you're either from the neighborhood and you're not like within the industry itself or you just came to visit and you have no idea what the fuck you're doing. And I think yeah. you're going to entrust your wallet to Yelp. Then I'm going to intervene and I'm going to, get, <laughs> I'm going to give you a list of like the actual places to go, you know, that's like, 100. I want you to actually understand what San Diego is, whether you're from Australia and live in LA and you think our shit is crusty and trash. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Tell them, well, tell them, yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't tell you the amount of times where people come in visiting from any shop that I've worked at. I'm like, yo, I'll write a, I'll literally get a receipt paper and give like 10 spots where I'm like, yeah, you got to hit tag. You got to hit Targos of Gordo, right? I mean, that's like a must in my head. Yeah. I mean, for a while I was like, do you like beer? You got to go to Hamilton's. I mean, Hamilton's is the spot. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then now it's Machete. Interesting choice. Machete is always like, that's the spot I recommend. Really? Always, dude. That's wow. like, to me, that's like the most realist, like, just watering hole, man. Really? I've never been anywhere that I felt more comfortable, that has the best beer selection. They're they're true, man. They're, they're real homies. They're really cool people. Damn. And to be down the street from them, you know, and to even eventually have coffee for them, white label for them. And that's the whole thing is going down there and like now being a part of your homie scene. And like hooking mm -hmm. them up and doing their thing, and you know. Let me grab this wine, my bad. Hey, Talk amongst yourselves. Yourself. Talk amongst yourselves. So let me rip your little vape. You want to lip, <laughs> rip the little robot dick? <laughs> <laughs> this place is sick. Oh, I've yeah. never been here before. We're gonna have some white wine now. Yes, sir. Dude, all right. Oh, sorry, I'm not gonna rinse your glasses. I apologize. But, um, dude, no, yeah, I fucking. What were we just talking about? Sorry. What were we talking about? I don't know. The ADD is real. Yeah. I love it. I think anyone that works at public oh, square talking. has that. We were talking about long play. Um, yeah. Dude. Um, but yeah, also, yeah. Sharing the selectors, right? Sharing anything that we, uh, Aaron's kind of instilled this, this, I don't know if you want to call it like a, a mindset or like a, I don't know anything, but where it's like, I'll share my best ideas always because we have an endless well, right? Yeah. Um, so, so to your me, your ideas should be like, a, re a renewable resource. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, I'll tell. I mean, it, be. yeah. I'll tell everyone everything that I'm working on. Always, no matter what. Dude, nothing's a secret here. I mean, I even told you the double IPA latte. <laughs> like, so if you safeguard one recipe, then you're just like that is now your personality. Yeah. And that's the only thing you're going to do and be known for. Well, I think it's very interesting. I mean, one thing I can I guess or can relate it to is that when you roast coffee. Dude, me and you can have the exact same coffee. Literally. Yeah. Me and Marco could have the exact same coffee. Oh, cheers, boys. Yeah. Cheers. Sorry. Cheers. A little rosé. Sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is a uh, a white wine. It's called Vino Verde. Definitely not a rosé. But it's fucking fire, bro. Hey, for a white wine, I don't fuck with white wines, but this wine is good. That's very good. Like, yeah. right? 
It's nice. It, it, it's it tastes good. It's light. It has to be chilled though. Mm-hmm. Like it's so funny. I posted this shit on my story one time, and I just got some DMs from homies like, "Yo, that vino verde is fire." <laughs> like, yeah. Dude, and then I'm not. I'm not gonna put it on blast. I like the price, and I like where it's at. So fuck you. But like, <laughs> if you know. That's not a secret. I'm not keeping a recipe, yeah. but, <laughs> but I just don't want all my wine to get bought. I'm the same way, dude, with film. I'm like, I got my spot that always has color film, and yeah. I don't want to share it. Dude, nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> I mean, if you know about the Vino Verde, good for you. But it's anybody else, yeah. nah, son. <laughs> but, like, um, one thing I will say is that, like, um, when you roast the coffee, if we have the same coffee, it will never taste the same. Never. It yes. won't. Like, yeah. it just will not, whether it's personal touch what I like to say, what I've said on the podcast before is like, bro, it's literally like you're feeling me when like you're, you're drinking that coffee. That's me. That's my touch. It's like, why is it so different when mom makes the mm-hmm. same dish that you made, but it hers tastes hella better because mom made it with love. Yep. Like I'm not saying no other coffee roasters roasting with love, but I know what I'm doing is like where I'm coming from. It's like, yo, I'm so happy when I'm doing this mm-hmm. shit. And like, I might look like, I'm mad crazy when I'm doing it, but like inside I'm like, this is a vibe. Like, Oh fuck. Yeah. Like, ah, it's the coffee's coming out good. Like, yes. When the curve Mm -hmm. hits. Right. And you're just like, dude, Dude, I'm not even like I'm on the curve tip, but I've been off that tip. Like I'm, I like. Yeah, you're more of like a, a sensory. Ah, uh, yeah, manual, I right? do it on feel, bro. Like yeah, one hundred. That's like, exactly why I think you'll resonate with uh with Gerardo with the uh, Provecho dude. Is that what he does? Mm-hmm. Always. He, I mean, he takes like I mean rigorous notes, right? Like I'm always on the note game. Yeah. So I mean, that you guys would definitely relate on that. The I got into roasting on the curve, you know, and like yeah. propster. So that that's my only knowledge of it. And I love roasting, but. That's not my game. I figured it out pretty quick. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Yeah. See, with me, bro, like, I, I want to know what I'm putting into your cup. I want to be that reason that, like, much like even Brandon, when, like, you're yeah, cooking, yeah. right? You know each ingredient from start to finish, and you know what that's going to taste like. Even if you don't know, yeah. you're still going to explore. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the same thing for me when I'm coffee roasting. Bro, yeah, it's hella funny. You listen to other coffee roasters and like, oh well, it needs to pop around like three eighty five or three ninety, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Never past three ninety, da 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 da. And it, dude, I swear to God, sometimes I have coffees that don't pop till four hundred, and they're fire. And I'm just like, did I do something wrong? And then I'll adjust, and then it fucks up the taste, and it's not there. Yeah. You have to feel it, and like, yes, I use all the technology. I'm not saying I don't. Yeah. But there's something about that feel, and then when it's reflected in your customer base, they like, they're like, damn you know it's um i don't want to say vindicated but it's like it's validation validated thank yeah. you that's a really good word uh it's validated but then also i mean like to you know shout out again long play hi-fi like i swear i'm a sponsor by them <laughs> coco uh one of the dudes who works there yeah, came yeah. in into here and he had my katahio but my katahio is a non-alcoholic mm-hmm I don't know if more people do that in town, but like I know, as far as I know, I'm the only non-alcoholic Cartagena. You're the first time I've ever heard of a Cartagena, like here, like in San Diego. I mean, they're around for sure. I mean, I don't probably venture those places. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. true, true. Uh, but he can't. Like I went, I went over there on December 29th. It was my friend Leov's birthday, and we went, uh, we went and had it. And he's like, "Hey, I've seen you before." And I was like, oh, yeah, my name's Connor. I own Caffeine and Green. You know, same spiel kind mm-hmm. of thing. Like, yeah, what's popping? Whatever. And uh, he's like, dude, yeah. He's like, he's like we have like, a... K on the way? Yeah, K on the way. <laughs> yo, K on the way. What's popping? <laughs> and he was like, yo, I... Um, he's like, you have a Cartagena on your menu. And I said, yeah. He's like, you inspired our Cartagena. And I was like, dude, I saw you had one. And they do the actual alcoholic version. And I was, he was like, you know, after I came to your shop, I tried it. He's like, I loved how you had the story behind it. And you had all this stuff. He's like, I put it on the menu. I, and he's like, you inspired our... Dude, for him to tell me that, I felt so fucking honored, bro. <laughs> I was like, bro, I tell everybody you're my favorite spot. Like, And now you're telling me one of the drinks on the menu is inspired by feel my seen. shop. Yeah, dude, dude, for real. I fucking... Yeah. And that inspired me because I'm like, I inspired somebody else or like at least my menu inspired somebody else. And then to hear the place that I recommend and I tell people that is like my favorite spot, to know that I insp- helped with their drinks like yeah oh, fuck yeah dude like that is just the coolest thing ever like yeah. I, I, in my professional life as far as like being i guess seen or recognized by your colleagues that one felt like a personal one like a, a, like a real like 
okay, you're doing all right. You know, like, yeah. yo, you're doing okay, bro. Like, I'm waiting for that one, dude. Not to say that I've had those moments, but I can't wait to where I can feel like, you know, mm-hmm. I, am, I am having some sort of influence and some sort of push in, like, the, the scene or the culture that we're trying to, like, be a part of. Dude, yeah. I mean, San Diego has a lot to offer right now. I think it's, like, we're in, like, more so than ever than in the last even maybe, like, 10 years. Yes. San Diego is popping right now. Ever insane. since the bibs actually started coming in, oh, yeah. like Michelin bibs and Michelin stars finally started rolling in, it's like it is more validating as a city because like all three of us growing up, you probably see our friends either leaving, moving to go pursue something in LA or in a different city, mm-hmm. whatever it is around the country, you know, mm-hmm. for some sort of excellence or education or just getting completely burnt out because it's not being recognized or seen and they start you know selling insurance which is nothing wrong with that but Fuck. you know i mean is there though there is kind of i was like <laughs> i don't want to be rude but <laughs> yeah, like, you know whatever pays the bills and you know you get to work from home and actually fucking travel which i'm je- jealous of I know. <laughs> I know same but same. it's like yeah that that validation is people are staying here and actively pursuing it because you know the community you know is made of ma- more so made of our friends now yeah, which is good, dude. I was just having this conversation today with one of my with one of my customers, and the idea of leaving like I'm a California boy, raised like born mm-hmm. and raised. You know, I grew up in the Bay Area, moved here, not for excellence, just because I wanted to be here because of skateboarding, and I, and uh, I've I've been here for 15, 16 years, something like that, mm-hmm. and now I'm at a point. I I recently there's been talks of like moving out of state and like setting up shop in another state for really good reasons. But in talking to this, this guest today, I was like, the thing about leaving California is like, yeah, it seems appealing. And like the taxes would definitely be less always yeah, because mm-hmm. the fucking taxes and people, especially in San Diego, how they just have right their now. fucking hands out. And, and then especially San Diego has their own laws and taxes compared to the re- separate from the state of California. Yeah. It's just like, intense miss me with this shit Mm -hmm. but at the same time it's still sd and it's beautiful and your homies are here and and i don't want to leave here and then this is where it comes in bro this is what i'm saying is that the network that i've developed especially now being here and then being in the hospitality and Mm -hmm. and um service yeah, yeah adjacent whatever coffee stuff but then in like what goes in with wine and then the alcohol and food and it's like this is what makes me most happy well, you got to figure it out. Like, I don't mm-hmm. want to leave this network of people that I've I've built on my own mm-hmm. now just to go fucking try to rebuild something in a new city. Like, it's weird. It's like fuck. a dating pool. You know, if you become single at like 55, you're going to be someone's stepdad and you're going to leave all of your friends and no one. <laughs> you're not going to know anyone. If you move out of the state and start dating. Yeah. You're fucked. Yeah. You know, or you might, you know, there's a very small outlier of people that like perfect it lined up perfectly for you good for you well yeah. dude S- dave over here at seek shout out to dave man that's my man that's my man's he moved here from houston mm-hmm. uh like a year i don't maybe a year yeah, ago that's for rel- for relatively new right dude and he's in his 40s he yeah. moved here with his wife starts seek seek i don't know if they're still number one but they've been number one for a long time for the breweries in san diego mm-hmm. he comes in and single-handedly changes the game in North Park. Bro, you walk into any fucking brewery now and you see a fruited sour on their menu, 100 because of this guy. <laughs> you go, you were like going maybe like, it was, they opened a month before we did. So we opened in May. So we opened in April. Mm-hmm. Even six months ago, you'd walk in any of these breweries. You ain't going to see one fruited sour. They shot off the fucking map with how popular they got. And then it was because of his fruited sours. And now you go everywhere and it's like, oh, there's fruited sours on the, on the menu now. It's like, hmm. Yeah. They make some excellent stuff over there. So that's like, but that's to your point though, right? Mm-hmm. Like he's the fucking outlier. Yeah. Yeah. He's the fucking guy. It's possible. It's definitely possible. But yeah, I always think about that too. And it's like. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely want to keep, I, I've always wanted to keep people here mm-hmm. and have them build on like the passion. Cause like if they keep leaving, we're never going to have like a set culture here or a set like. Fuel, but that's so. a transplant city though you got to think about that though. yeah right? definitely right i mean with it's military true. and yeah. with schooling with everything i mean san diego is a huge yeah transplant city well, but, but like not even just that i mean people i can't tell you how many times people come in here like specifically mm-hmm. my clientele <clears throat> and they're like 
they're like, oh my God, we're visiting. It's so amazing. Yeah. And like, we just love it here. We're talking about moving. And it's like, oh, do you know, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't say, you know, <laughs> like, like so does yeah. everybody, yeah. you know, because it's, it is at the end of the day, bro. Like you never been out of the country. Have you been out of the country? Yeah. Okay. When you go around the world, I want to come back home so bad, bro. Bro, when you tell people, like, if you talk to some strangers or some yeah. homies that you just meet in a different country, yeah. like, oh, where you live? Like, oh, San Diego. Like, San Diego? You never hear somebody like, oh, you live in fucking Nebraska. No sh- no shade. Sorry for people in Nebraska. <laughs> but, like, you know, it's like you're living in San Diego. It's like, do you? And then it's like, no, I used to, I like, I live in OB. Like, I live right at the beach, da, 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 da. Yeah. And they just, like, their face is like, oh, my. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You know? Always. Yeah. That shit. And then you yourself feel that way about the city. Yeah. It's like, bro, I fucking love San Diego. I'm not even from here, but I love it. It's weird because, like, all the things that people love, San, like, San Diego for, like, that's, like, the things I don't do. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I don't do mm-hmm. the beach. I'm not a sand guy at all, man. I I'm not a sand guy. I don't like the sand, <laughs> dude. Um, and then cold water. Like, I don't fuck with it. I don't fuck with cold water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it, it's everything else here. It's the, it's like the, it's the hundred years of people being here. It's like the, it's, it's the, the people meshing with each other. It's like the, the weird mixing of neighborhoods. I mean, that's the shit that gets me here. And it's like the, I don't know, man. I just, there's like a certain fuel that you get here. I think growing up here, dude, I, I think for me, it's definitely the skateboarding. It's the weather. It's the coffee. I, I, Mexico. I fucking love Mexico. Like so much. I think it's just the chillness for me, man. Yeah. Yeah. Vibe. Yeah. It's fucking chill. <laughs> San Diego is definitely, I mean, dude, there's a reason I've lived in LA. I lived yeah. in the Bay area, but San Diego is like San Diego is the only city I left and I came back. Yeah. Yeah. Like, bro, I was like, See, I got to get visiting back visiting LA or San Francisco, but I'm like, I love going home too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always stoked to come back to this as much as I, I'm not like a, like a sunny, like, you know, go to the beach, but like, dude, it's fucking cool here. It's chill. I, I don't have to bitch about anything really. Nah. And it's changing so fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's the like the most exciting part about being in the hospitality business is the fact that you're a part of something bigger right now that's growing. Yeah, and it, and it is shifting. It's shifting tough. Yeah, and it's and really it, interesting in a really cool way though, because I think you're seeing a lot of the stuff that we're talking about here. Whether it's like, you know, I mean, the friendly's been around for a while now, but I mean, like them actually opening up and like really doing what they're doing. I think that was a huge catalyst in what's going on now. Yeah. I mean, like have people that I do have that like knowledge of great food and like this like industry background that just want to do like the the simple shit dude it's like they're creating institutions now yeah which is great and that's like with people who used to leave and like didn't want to be a, a part of the thing or they didn't think that it could succeed here whatever the dream was then you know now it's actually succeeding and growing people are coming back or just staying as they grow up too i mean mm-hmm. look at consortium mm-hmm. yeah that's a whole thing man they're fucking taking over yeah and they're literally, dude, the people who are a part of it, like, and I'm not saying this to be throwing shade. I'm saying it to the point of like people believing it is like they're drinking the red Kool-Aid or yep. like the yeah. juice. They're drinking the juice. Whoever works for consortium, they're yeah. like, it's the best. And oh, we like, know we that. Both did. Yeah, yeah, we both did. For you both were for consortium. Yeah. I used to manage for consortium. Yeah. Did you really? Mm-hmm. And I used to work where he managed. Yeah. So you, you guys were definitely drinking the Kool-Aid. Then. Oh, oh definitely. absolutely. I was deep in it. I had the yeah. coin, bro. I was going to every spot around here. Yeah, yeah. I had the yeah. coin. Yeah. What does that mean? The medallion. So you get that when you get hired after a few months and then it's mm-hmm. 50% off everywhere. Damn. Off of all the properties. Yeah. So the when you're, for, from my perspective, when I was after my ninety days or whatever it is, when you're available or you're eligible for like the the coin, quote unquote, you're like brought into the office with an owner, and then they, the owner then offers you a specific amount of money in cash and like slides it to you, or the coin and and like the company like handbook, like the book that he wrote. And you can pick to either take the cash and quit at that moment and be all, like given the opportunity for him to be a reference for you for a different job or you can take the coin and the book and stay. That's it. So if you look up the definition of a cult, that's that's you know, kind of the most G shit yeah, I've ever heard, it's, though. It's pretty, I'm kind of impressed. Oh, no. But we will. I mean, we've talked about this. We'll do a version of that. Yeah. But not to that level. No, like, Yo, that's tight, though. We, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, I mean, I don't know if it's actually tight. I think it's just funny. Like, no, yeah, like it's, wow. It's, a kind of, it's, it's insane. Me personally, yeah. and like, you know, I, I don't have an issue with anyone there. I still nope. see the owners. They dap, you know, they dap me up and say what's up. And they still do good shit. I mean, yeah. Not and gonna, like yeah. The, the reason why I joined Consortium, like my initial interview with the owner, I was like, you know, you're from here. You did 
college here, you do business here, and you're actively trying to improve my community via the thing that I love the most, which is like culinary arts and like beverages. So why wouldn't I want to try and work here? Basically, so my man, fact, my man's my man's a realist. He's just like fuck it, like yo, yeah, I want to do this exactly. So but, yeah, we were talking about like the homie card or like the you know yeah, I have some version of it. Damn, this is popping. Get some cards out to the homies on yeah. our side too. Yeah, for anyone who's still here. Yeah, damn, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I was talking to Marco about this, dude. Can I tap that? I just oh yeah, go yeah, yeah. I know, right? Let's just. I know. I just so like attractive. yo. I just keep and seeing it's you. Matcha. What is the fucking? What is this? Yeah. I've never heard of this one. Just take it from the top, dude. <laughs> <laughs> It's vapes, if if anyone's curious. Oh, well, it just tastes like matcha. <laughs> right? And it's chill. I thought these were illegal, Marco. They are. If you, not if you have a plug, though. <laughs> we have Thank a lot you. of plugs. Dude, wow. <laughs> friends of friends, dude. Literally. That's just life. Yeah, That's man. just life, bro. I mean, it's really, ab- it's, again, it's about that network, right? Mm-hmm. Thank you, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I can't imagine. Like, I mean, I'm sure especially for me, like the way I am as a person, I could probably show up in a city and like six months later, I'll be like, all right, not know everybody, but like I know some people, Yeah. but I think to, for this conversation specifically, it's like, dude, to, to, to be a part of this and to see like you guys, like I just met you Brandon, but like to see Marco. Mm -hmm. And now that I know you're going to be like the guy, you know, like you're one of the guys, you know? And it's like, Oh, these are my homies right here. This is not just like, me trying to flex or trying to drop a name or something. It's like, no, these are my homies. They've been on my show. Yeah. I've seen you guys come up. I've judged you in a latte art contest. You have. Dude, <laughs> you know, like we've had a lot of good times. And I think that is the, the thing. And then that's why like having you on the show again and like having you now, Brandon, and having you guys on here, it's like I want to put my homies on. Because like for me, one of my things as a human is like I get so excited when I see my friends doing tight shit. Mm-hmm. And I want to shout it to the fucking world. They're yeah. like literally like what we're doing right now. Yeah. We're putting you guys on. Like so when any of the countries that are people who are listening um, around the world, if they come to San Diego, they'll fucking know now and be like, yeah, yo, yeah. friends of friends. Like, yo, I want to go here. I want to check it out. And that's the same mindset that I hold with, with anything that I want to do now where it's like, oh, cool. I want to do some sick merch. I have my homie that does this. Yeah. Or we have homies that work at Squeegee. You know, we can do that. Yeah, I mean, Squeegee. Like, dude, shout out to Juan Carlos. Dude, Yo, Juan he's is the a, homie. Juan and Jess are dope. They're Juan. very avid visitors of Public Square. Dude, I love that G. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, he's a really cool guy. I mean, his, have you heard him play music? <laughs> he's a fucking... My G, insane, you know dude. he skates, right? He does. Dude, he's a fucking... Dude, me and no, him I've both wrote for Route 44. I've seen him shred. Hey, oh, <laughs> I'm wearing a Route 44 hoodie, dude. This is the fucking... <laughs> for life, bro. I have yeah. it tatted on me. Like, yo, when I fucking seen Juan skating, I was like... Yo, okay, I was mad intimidated by Juan. <laughs> like, real talk. Because he, he could skate Washington Street, like, super gnarly. And then all of a sudden you see him play music and have the harmonica yeah, dude. around his neck. And, and like the blank. voice, man. Bro. He's got such a unique voice. In Espanol and English. Yeah, dude. Yo, <laughs> what's poppin'? <laughs> but that's the thing, though, right? So, like, now they're homies. And, you know, I was talking to, the, talking to him the other day. And he was like, dude, like, the minute you guys need something, cool. Like, hit us up. Yeah. And then same, same with him. I was like, dude, if you guys need anything from our end. I mean, that's the mindset that I'm trying to like put on now where it's like, if I can't eat or if my homies can't eat, I'm not going to eat. You know what I mean? Well, it's putting everybody coming up like, dude, a rising tide raises all ships, my G. Like Mm -hmm. real talk. Everybody's coming up. There's enough. Yeah. There's enough to eat. Cause like, dude. But even, I mean, even when we weren't like that, I mean, if I had like 10 bucks and my homie had none, I had five bucks. Right. I mean, like it's that same sort of mindset now with this where it's like. So it was in high school. Yeah. If my homie well, dude, doesn't have circle, a business to put anything on him, he's my like my business now. So you can, this is yours too, bro. I mean. Well, dude, the circle gets smaller, right? Yeah. And then like, yeah, there's everybody who says like, oh, I fucking love, I'm a foodie. Yeah. But you're just enjoying the labor of everybody else. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing because I enjoy all of that. Yeah. And I love foodies and all that stuff. But the people who are taking the risk to showcase what they love and offer it to the world. Yeah. That, I think, in itself, regardless of who you are, what you're doing, you took a chance. You could fail easily. Mm -hmm. 50-50 chance. Most of them do. Yeah. Yeah. And most of them do. But the ones who keep making it and then, like, you see, it's like, if I knew nothing else about you two, nothing, and we were just hanging out and I knew that you guys started your own businesses, automatic, in my opinion, you get that respect because I know that you know how fucking hard this is dude i mean it's the the hard is like one aspect right but then there's the stress right i mean that to me is like oh that's all of it though like yeah, that's yeah. what i mean by hard yeah, and yeah, i'm yeah. saying encompassing 
all of that. It, yeah. Yeah. Bro, I know you known me before I had all this white hair and my motherfucking beard. <laughs> that shit came after opening yeah. the shop. And I literally talked about that today where I was like, yo, yeah. I can't wait to like, I mean, in a year, I'm going to have some shit right here. I have in my some hair, like, dude. colorless hair in my hair. Bro, <laughs> it's <laughs> starting in my hair right here to the side. Like, stop it. But it's, like, it's not it, even gray. It's, it's like, like clear. Is it weird no, right it's now. white. It's yeah. weird. It's yeah. white. Is it weird that like I want it though? I mean, like, I don't think I can. You're going to look distinguished, my G. George Clooney. No, not even. Pepper. Not even the hair, but like the heart. Like, I, I want that. Like, I want to be able to, like, go through the fucking weeds, man. I want to yeah. be able to, like, do it and then come out and then be an errand to someone else, you know? Yeah. That's what I describe to, like, a lot of people that are, like, either adjacent to us or coming up mm-hmm. that have ideas. And, like, really, really smart people will more than likely never actually pursue it because, you know, they're insecure or, or very – they're so smart that they're nervous and they think about everything that could go wrong. And then you see a lot of very, for lack of a better word, like dumb people actively succeeding because they're incapable of being nervous, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, I mean, yeah, yeah. Aaron's Aaron's helping me with that. And that's what you have that. I I think we were talking about the other day where it's like, that I'm dumb. Stop it, Marco. That's mean. (laughs) We're on the radio. (laughs) Like, but that, like that confidence, man, where it's like, I mean, like there's no way I know you're going to do something and you're not going to kill it. And I know, I know my own skill set. I know I can do shit, but at the same time, I'm not like that. And it's tough for me to like build that up, you know? So it's, it's a learning process. Get some, get some, we need to finish. Yeah, we got to finish it. Yeah, we got to finish those. Um, well, thank you. I appreciate those kind words, Marco, honestly, but like, dude, I will say, I mean, like that's like a two part, like a two part answer almost, or like, or just a, where I want to go is that. I've heard multiple like billionaires, millionaires, dude, fucking Nipsey Hustle. Like Nipsey talks. Oh, let me get some. Let me top oh, me off. Top oh, me off. Top oh, me off. Top oh, me off. Right here. Got you, G. That should be the end. Yeah. There we it. go. There Beautiful. we go. There we go. Shout out to the Vino Verde. <laughs> um, Nipsey Hustle said, uh, "Salute, boys. Fuck yeah." Um, Nipsey Hustle and other like wealthy entrepreneurs have said, "You want to be the dumbest person in the room." You want to you wanna be able to have all the smartest people in their like, categories, if you will, for lack of a better term, kind of letting you know what's popping, giving you the insight to what needs to be done on another level to push the company forward or something like that. Eventually, I want to be the dumbest person in the room. I don't need to be right now, but like at the moment... I'm okay with doing what I am, but like, bro, I want to get to a point where it's like, yeah, I'm the dumbest person in the room, bro. Like, let's make this happen. Let's all be better. Like, you know, like you can, everything you do can always be better. Yeah. No matter what it is, you get somebody's new fresh insight, like, you know, or somebody who's looking out from the inside, like you're too close to it. Mm -hmm. So you need to like have somebody else come in and I mean, maybe Brandon, you'll notice something he doesn't know, or like you know something every day. I think think that'll be huge. That's going to be huge for us. I think. Easily, because I, I have the confidence to go to him and be like, yo, I don't know. And I'm sure he does, too. Yeah, yeah. vice versa. Dude, uh, it's much needed. Otherwise, you're just, yes, 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 yeah. the entire time. Well, and the you confidence, mean, you got to believe in yourself in that sense to run with your own idea, because you can be influenced from other people outside, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? But it's like somebody's like, no, 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 I don't think that's going to be good. And you're like, nah, it's going to be the shit. And then you just take it. But also, at the same time, bro, like, I appreciate you saying about the confidence thing, but, like, for me, it's not even like a... I've said this before, like, on... I don't know if it was on a podcast, an interview or something like that, but I remember saying it is like to be good at something that is not physically going to hurt me like skateboarding did, um, oh. you know, broken ankles, mm-hmm. like, you know, MMA and jujitsu fucked up yeah. legs, knees. I have to worry about physical harm or getting like pos- potentially getting knocked out, you know, whether it's skateboarding or fighting, I can handle those things. And when you can dig deep, and you've you you've sp- spent you've like you've blown your load for lack of a better term in a jujitsu match and you're just getting dominated and you know you're gonna lose and you're just waiting for that fucking bell to go but you're like i'm not gonna give up i'll do just the bare minimum because you're dead mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but there's also the potential like you can get your leg blown out you can get your ankle blown out or you could fall on this trick and slip out and like break your shit if i'm gonna do something that is not physically harmful to my body and it's just more of like a mental game like mental checkers or you know, chess, whatever you want to play. Yeah. You have to stand up all day, but it's like, what's the, what are you really doing? You're doing numbers. You're doing uh, hospitality, customer service. This stuff is not physically hurting me Mm -hmm. the way I'm used to being physically hurt. 
So why not? Like it's that's that fuck it. Like yeah. when that bell rings, most people are gonna run the other way. But that bell rings and you're gonna fight your opponent. You walk towards that motherfucker. Like let's go fuck it. Like I'm gonna bang out with this fool. Or like yo, I'm gonna skate this gap. And then once I did it once, all right, now you're ready. That's that fuck it mentality. Like you gotta have that fuck it mentality in life. At least the way I no, see it. And it's weird because I feel it lurking yeah. underneath this little fucking shadow that I have. That's like a yeah. little bit more like wait. That's pretty incredible. I like the way you describe yeah, it. Yeah, man. Whether I mean, it, yeah, physical or mental hurt. It's like, yeah. Cause the mental bro, that's, that's for me, that's what it is. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause like the people that I watch or like, I, I mean, it sounds weird. Everybody I've told this kind of sounds weird. So like bear with me, but like for a long time, I, I haven't done it in a while, but for a long time I used to wake up in the morning and listen to speeches. Mm-hmm. like motivational speeches yeah, like people talking about like how to be like successful and how to believe in yourself and just keep fucking going you know and then there's like people who talk about like hardening your mind like your body responds to what you're telling it to do yeah. so control that shit mm-hmm. you ain't feeling no pain you ain't gonna be scared yeah you're scared for a second but when that bell rings or like whatever it's gone you're fucking going you're trained you know what to do mm-hmm. do it you know kind of thing it's intense it's 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 gnarly but you know what to fucking do. Opportunity means preparation. Mm-hmm. Then what have you been doing for the last eight years? Fucking You've been making yep. fucking coffee. Make fucking coffee, bro. Do what you know how to do. Go in there. Check your shit at the door. Today you're here. Today's a new day. Let's fucking go. Like, boss up. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? You're going to look back and be like, damn, I should have did that. Nah, you ain't going to should have done nothing. Like, you sh- you did do it. You woke up this morning. You fucking did that shit. You know what's funny is I... it's. You're right. I mean, 100% with everything. I learned that the hard way at, at Lofty. And it really, I think, shook me to a point where now getting in this cafe is going to be like, no, I know what the fuck I'm doing. I yeah. know how to do this. Like, I know I know anyone that's worked with me and has worked under me, like, knows that I can do this shit. I'm Dude, the last I know you here. can yeah, do this shit. And I, I know I know it now, too, but it's the actuality now of, like, cool, let me put my feet down and, like, do this shit now. Um, I'm excited for it, but it's just, it's, it's like the un undone unseen un you know, I haven't done it. So bro, but see, I think I'm I mean, I anticipation. I, I hope you don't mind me saying this because this is one thing that I, I've touched on. And to be honest, I've only told this to one other person because I was talking about our conversation. We had a conversation the other day. He came into the shop mm-hmm. and I was like, Marco, you're one of the best latte artists I've ever seen in my life. Like ever. <laughs> like you could be like Instagram status. Like, you know, like you could be up there with like the Koreans that we see and like the dudes who are fucking just like next level artistic. Right. Like El Artista. Like, let's go. You know what I'm saying? And. Uh, but how many fucking latte art, latte art competitions yeah. has he have? Has he made it out of the first round? One. One. And it was the one I judged, I will say, because we didn't, it was blind. We didn't know, but we picked the one and you won. And I was like, what the fuck? I looked at him and I was like, yo, that's you. Ah, you know, like hype. That's my G right there. That's my G. And, uh, but that was the thing is that I know what you're saying. I know it because I see it. Yeah. Like you have this nervous quality that your hand like starts vibrating super dramatically yeah. for no reason. Cause it's maybe this pressure or whatever, like obviously, but when you're at peace, yeah. when you're in your element and you're just like, and maybe in a rush or you're doing something like that. And I've also seen you doing that and it's bro, there's nothing wrong. Like yeah. it's like perfecto, you know, it's just fucking there. And to see you now to your point, doing your own thing, it's like, it's about goddamn time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Dude, you know what I mean, I'm saying? I like, a, I had a real life example with this the other day. I mean, yesterday. I don't know if you were there with that that guy. Oh my god, yeah. So oh, the guy. So some the guy. guy. It's always that guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, some guy came in and you know, I was talking to him how I talk to anybody. You, me, my dad, my fucking mom. I don't know. Just yeah. And I was, was like, Yo, what's up, man? How How's it going? Speech? You know? What's popping? And he's like, uh, uh, have some respect. You know, I'm either Sir Don or Mister So and So. That's what he said to you. Yeah. And I was like. Well, first of all, I was like, we're equals, man. I was like, this is how I talk to anybody. So I was like, I have the, I have a lot of respect, bro. Trust me. And I was like, I'm not being disrespectful to you, but like, cool. We'll just fucking move on. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, Next subject. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, that, that whole thing took like, I would say like two or three minutes of that literal conversation of like, you don't know where I'm coming from. Like, I trust me. I know what you're saying, but that's old mentality, bro. Like, I don't know what to Sir tell you. or mister. Yeah, dude. Yeah. But so, I mean, to kind of move past that, like. There was a lady in behind him that started getting into it with him. You know, she's 40 years old 
and he's in his 50s and she's like don't tell me how to fucking talk like he was being polite blah blah blah, this and that but when it really came down to it what i was thinking was like when those instances happen or those like you know i'm like fuck did i did i fuck up did Did you handle that wrong Did i do that wrong this and that did i fuck this up did i say something that i shouldn't have said but it's like hearing like what the conversation ended up as and what she told me at the end of it and what my coworkers are telling me i'm like fuck dude i mean i've done this a hundred million times i know how to do it like yeah but it's just that that weird feeling what of are like, the odds that he's wrong you know yeah it's like it's exactly dude, but the so, he okay. being marco i'm like that's no yeah no because like, that's the thing is customers always right right the whole thing the, yeah and they're yeah. like the customer isn't always right but they're always king which is the worst fucking part which makes yes. people in the service industry gaslight themselves and we've we, i've i've nice talked to brandon point. about this like in my handbook is specifically what i put is that obviously you know we have to cater to people. Essentially, that's our job description. We're hospitality. We're we're serving people. We're customer but, service. Yes, but not at the expense of the dignity or respect of my employees. Ever, Ooh, ever. Nice. Dude. Never. Okay. Never okay. will I hear that in my. If, if, if he was saying that to one of my staff, I'm never gonna just like, hey, I'm gonna be like, yo, dude, you have a problem on how we talk here. This is how we talk. You can come in, or you don't have to, bro. I mean, this is my fucking staff. Like, they're not gonna talk to them like that ever dude to me the staff is the most important part of a shop yeah a hundred percent i mean dude. that's your that's your bread and butter right a hundred percent dude yeah. and if they don't see that confidence in me and them and like having their back they're not gonna fucking have my back yeah never dude but that needs to shift in my opinion in the service industry yeah Absolutely. it depends on who you talk to obviously everyone's got different point of views but like this is what i'm doing dude fuck off this is how we we're respectful. We're not rude. We're acceptive. We're, you know, we're everything that we need to be. Yeah. And if you're not with it, dude, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, dude. I mean, I would definitely say to an extent, obviously, that's you know. just such a hard, that's such a fucking hard subject because I've definitely been on both sides. Yeah. Right. Like there's people that you approach that, you know, are just dicks and they're just like, they're making it hard for you. Yeah. But then also being on the other side and you're just like, you know, knock on wood. I don't fucking, I've never had to like refuse service for anybody, yeah. but like I, I've had people come up to me before. Like when I was at another coffee shop, they were like, I was wearing a Raider beanie, bro. I don't ask me how many fucking football games I watched this year. <laughs> <laughs> fucking zero, bro. But am I still going to wear a Raider beanie? Yeah. 100%, I grew dude. up in the Bay area. Yeah. That's the, t- I literally grew up like going to those fucking games. So it's like, okay. Yeah. That's just what it is. That's what I identify with. Yeah. Exactly. But this girl walks up and immediately is like, ew. That was the first thing she said to me. I was like, hey, how's it going, guys? She's like, ew. I was like, uh, I'm sorry? Sports. And she's like, you're beanie. And I was like, what? And I like, I like, I looked. I couldn't see it, so I took it off. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, this is a Raider beanie, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, I grew up there. She's like, you know you're in San Diego, right? I was like, <laughs> yes. Where and, no team is. Yeah, and I was like... <laughs> She's like, it's kind of just not letting it go. And I was like, mm-hmm. cool. Well, like, you know, awesome. All right. <laughs> and then she said something and like, it was just kind of like, I sat there and I was like, well, what can I get you guys? Yeah. yeah. And then I, there was like a fucking Yelp review or something. It was like the guy at the counter was a dick. He didn't laugh like at my joke and blah, blah, blah. Uh, he yeah, knew yeah. he took it too yeah. seriously. I was like, Yo, this like we're not is- responsible for validating. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm sorry I didn't laugh at your non-existent joke, and yeah. I was wearing a beanie yeah. of a team that you didn't like. Yeah, and I'm not gonna like, expect my staff to bend over backwards to make someone feel like that. You know what dude, I mean? It's like, so dumb. And obviously, like to an extent, right? I mean, we're never gonna be rude. We're never gonna be like dismissive. But like, yeah, I'm not gonna let my employees be talk to like that, man. I mean, no. <laughs> we work. We know how hard it is to work in that. You know how hard it is to work in that. Like, there's a certain point like a threshold and if you pass that i mean to me that's just like there's been so many so many men in the like when i was managing for consortium like late at night that are obviously just like off their shit that i had to call them good guys and be like hey you seem like a good guy but you know it's like you can't be fucking doing this shit so it's like <laughs> wow one of those things. And, you know, it's like diffusing and then removing yes. it's like you know you can't fucking be in here talking to people like that especially my hostess my busters, anyone, you know, yeah. I'm like, you can't talk to anyone like that. Like, what are you doing? And they're yeah. like, well, you know, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm not asking you to apologize. I'm just asking you to leave, you know? I'm just like, and that's what I mean. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, yo, what's <laughs> yeah. up, dude? Throw up hands. Like, it's like, like throw up hands. <laughs> yeah. Never I'm that. not qualified to like therapize you. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, 
you can't be here anymore, you know. Up until a certain point, yeah. I was I was willing to speak to you, but yeah. once you start using this, a specific kind of language of like, yeah, you know, just take a left, go to waterfront, and just like yo, that. <laughs> <laughs> for real, right? Yeah, I was like, go where there's a bouncer, and then you'll be all right. Yeah, Damn. Like, <laughs> Were you at Underbelly? Uh, Ironside. Oh, okay, yeah. Ironside. All right, all right, all right. That was a fun spot, especially after a certain point at night. Oh for yeah. Sure. yeah, I would <laughs> imagine. I would imagine. <laughs> Dude, I can't. Yeah, I. That's my one thing I've been telling people recently. I was like, what I realized <clears throat> is I'm a bar for the morning. Yeah, dude. People, dude, people come in and they talk to me about their lives, and yeah. I legit have that's conversations. A point. I never thought about it like that. No, yeah. we are, and I will say without the benefits of being a bar at night, right? I mean, because you can wait for 20 minutes at a bar, and no one's ever gonna be like. Dude, fuck that place. I had to wait for yeah, yeah. 20 minutes, right? <laughs> but then you go to a fucking coffee shop and you wait 10 minutes and they're like, dude, where the fuck's my coffee? Dude, there's a bar. Impatient. Uh, dude, Impatient. There's no. that a one. A bar in LA, a, a girl, like a, a person took like, I want to say like 17 minutes to pour me a Modelo. And like, 17? Did you start clocking it? Oh, yeah. Me me and my friend, my wow. wife and our friend were just like standing there like, all right, it's been like five minutes. And then it became like 10 minutes. And I was like, all right, now it's just getting funny. Like we were mad, like at seven minutes in that 10, we're like, all right, this is kind of funny. And then we timed it. And like at 17 minutes, like when she finally started pouring it, like she was, they weren't doing anything. And I was like, I like, we started like just being really happy about like the amount of disdain that she had for a customer. It was like, <laughs> it was actively inspiring. And you only get that at nighttime. It was like, you yeah, can't yeah. get that in the morning for your coffee. You know? Yeah. It's like, I mean, and then when are they going to start? Yeah, exactly. And then the crazy part too is that, oh, cool. I don't mind paying, you know, $20 for a shot of Patron. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, cool. I can buy it at the store for fucking $20. I can buy a whole bottle for $20. 20 bucks. Yeah. yeah and then have some leftover, you know? Yeah. But then the minute you go to, the minute you go to a coffee shop, and you get a coffee, like, a, I don't know, say you got a Gesha, right? Something that's handpicked at its ripeness, you know, and you pay $16 a cup. They're like, what the fuck is this? That one, I would I would only push back on that because, like, the Gesha, mm. I mean, like, I feel like people who are going to order that, they kind of know. I would yeah. definitely say. Or I guess for, like, an espresso even, right? Or well, like I a, would say, a like, a, yeah, like a latte. A latte, yeah. Add shot, vanilla. Eight bucks. Like, with a mushroom powder yeah. and then an oat milk. Yeah. Like yeah, that's eight dollars, bro. Yeah, and eight dollars, and then they like want to they want a pastry, and it's like yeah. I don't know, it's like six, five to six bucks. I'm never going back there. It was twenty bucks for two items. It was for yeah. me and myself. I got a piece of food and a drink, and it was like thirteen dollars. Because you never fully tricked it out. You pimped your ride, dude. I'm like, it's like, bro, <laughs> what do you, you want? wanted the seasonal kunyaman yeah. plus the mushroom latte yeah. <laughs> with oat milk. But the, my g. But the thing yes, is, <laughs> the thing is too that's like shocking. Which off, which honestly inspired me to have the whole beer and wine and kind of like adult aspect of friends of friends, right? Mm-hmm. Is that the, I mean that's where the that's honestly unfortunately that's the profit. You know, there's not a huge profit margin with coffee, and I know you know that too. It's not, but it is. It's be per. It depends what kind of game you're going. Exactly, into, right? yeah. exactly. But it's like, what's your game? What's your niche? Like, yeah. what are you gonna do? Rich gang banging music. I know my lane. That's what Nipsey said. It's like as long as you know your lane, fucking stay in your lane. There ain't nobody in that lane. You find your lane. Ain't nobody in your lane. Look at that. No traffic. Yeah. Keep going in your fucking lane, bro. Yeah. If you try to hop in the lane with everybody else and you're doing the same thing everybody else is doing, oh, there's a lot of traffic there. Yeah. Hmm. You know, why is it not working? You know, you got to, fi- you got to figure out your game. It's chess. It's not checkers, man. Yeah. There ain't no, but there ain't no rule book or guidebook to this. Yeah. You have your homies. Yeah. You have your shit, but what's your way to do it? And your way is doing it exactly the way you both are doing it right mm-hmm. now. You know what I'm saying? That's your lane. Mm-hmm. You're doing what James did without adding like, and this is no shade. It's just like what they did when they had the little Italy spot. It yeah. was like, Six different spots. It's like the barber shop, sunglass yeah. shop, some clothes shop, whatever and like other shit they have in there. Hit, dude. It did. Yeah. It did. And it I mean, I don't know if it still does. Like I mean, it's I, still popping. Yeah, yeah. it's still yeah. popping in there. It's and it's a, it's established. Yeah. It's a staple and boom, there you go. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's like there's still like when people think that there's no avenues that haven't been explored yet, it's felt it's false. Oh, always. You just need to think outside the box or find your shit and stay in that and stay in that fucking lane. Stay in your lane, bro. Yeah. Stay in your fucking lane, find your lane, and once you do it, once it hit, people who fuck with you are gonna find you. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah, and, it takes time. And but that's the thing too, is like we're not reinventing anything. Mm-hmm. Like we're literally we're doing coffee, we're doing food, we're doing beer, maybe some aperitifs, digestive. I disagree. Wine. I disagree though. 
I disagree. And this is from an outsider's well, no, no, no. perspective. I, I know. Not that we're not doing anything new in terms of, I mean, in that sense, we're not. But in cultivating into one space, yeah. harboring it like that, and then also keeping true to ourselves, not bending over backwards for anyone else, that's new to me. At least anywhere that I can see it, down where we're going to be. Well, that's what I mean, though. That's why I said I disagree. Because what you guys are doing, both of you, and then 10K, and then oh, it's just you three, sorry. Uh, that whole aspect is going to be bringing in so many different elements, so many different groups of people mm -hmm. that like as an outsider without knowing anything again, without knowing anything about el else about it, dude, I'd look at that and be like, I need to go there. I need to go check this fucking place out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So the only other person or like group that is doing something even close to similar, but it, it wouldn't even be close to similar because they don't have coffee is like homage. Yeah. Oh, the bakery? Yeah. Uh, no. Um, oh, no. Homage Brewing. Brewing yes. in LA. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Nick is a fantastic brewer, but like they have an amazing beer and like a Saison program, you know, just like a, an amazing beer program and an amazing food program. Really? But then also yeah. like a super fucking sick like listening bar that like they utilize every week to put up like insane shows. And, you know, hopefully soon we'll be in collab with them, too. Yes. Sick. Yeah. Sick. So it's like looking towards those people, like, for the vision of, like, liquid food and then music as well. So it's like they're doing it, you know, just replace a liquid with coffee. Yeah. Boom. It's obviously working. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, fucking A. Yeah. I mean, just again, find Finding your lane, bro. lane, yeah. Find your fucking lane and stay in that lane. And just do it, like, the way we're going to do it. I mm -hmm. mean, that's it. Dude, that's why I think about it, like. When I'm doing my coffee shit, like whatever we're doing in this space, dude, it's just like little Wayne said, he was like, I think I'm the best rapper alive. He's like, it's not that I'm trying to shit on everybody else. He's like, but I think that if, if you're a professional, you need to believe that you are the best in your craft. Other than that, like, why are you doing it? Yeah. Yeah. If you do not believe that you are the best in your craft, why the fuck are you doing it? I mean, and that proves it in itself. I mean, in my head, he's like top 10 rappers of all time. Dude, top 10. Easily. He's still, yeah, yeah. He's still, like, he's not going to go away. No, he, no. he, he's old as fuck now. But like when he was popping, like 13, dude, dude, he's, <laughs> he was a hot boy. He was, you know, and little Wayne is like, ah, dude, no. the Carter two, arguably one of the top 10 best hip hop albums of all time dude. produced lyrically. In Whatever. All the, the mixtapes, man. All the droughts. Dude, all those. The, the drought three. <laughs> oh my the fucking, yeah, dude. The leak. Like, yo, I'm me. I mean, just bitch, I'm me. King like, of punchlines, man. I mean, just like I, the most unassuming rapper is the best rapper. One of the best rappers of all time. Dude, Gucci Mane. Gucci Mane is like, uh, he's like, I don't rap against anybody. It's me versus me. Like, yo, I. Mm -hmm. Gucci Mane's a whole. Thing in him, he's in a whole thing in himself, bro. Dude. That's it, one hundred percent. Why my Instagram name is the name? It's a Gucci thing, is because of Gucci Mane. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I fucking love Gucci. He is literally. He's dope, bro. I saw Gucci at North Park Observatory. Oh no, shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that was like right cool, after dude. he got out of jail, right oh, after he man. was in prison, and he was all slim and all dude, fit. Dude. He was, dude. I was tripping. I was like, damn, it's not, it's not fat Gucci. Like, yeah. I was looking at him. I was like, Fat Gucci was a Fat Gucci was, was a vibe, that was, dude. dude. I love Fat Gucci. <laughs> fat Gucci was the best Gucci. But I mean, he's tight now. He's all he's all ripped and he's like healthy and like got million dollar rings and shit. But like, <laughs> he's tight. Like you know, that was. But that's out the box, out the box. You awesome. gotta fucking do your out the Nas box. Nas has got to be one of your top, right? No, Nas is my top. Yeah, Nas is top. Goat. Uh, fuck, man. You know, honestly, like, I definitely. You know, I've I've been thinking about this recently. Sorry, we're gonna shift gears. We're gonna talk hip hop. Yep. Soon. Okay, Nas. <laughs> like, sorry, I'm I'm fucking yo. Now I'm geeking, but yo, Nas for me. I I remember where I was when I heard Life After Death for the first time. I remember <laughs> where I was when I heard Ready to Die. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, for Biggie, Biggie's top three. Biggie's top three, no doubt. Always. Um, but Nas, Nip, Nas, Nip, Biggie. ASAP Rocky's quickly in my like my top five because he's just so fucking gifted. Yeah. Coda the friend, another top oh, fiver. Yeah. I love Coda just because I think he's real. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, bro, like that is just recent. But if then we're gonna go top like greatest all time, all time. Like I love Pac. Pac's there, but like Pac's not a lyricist. Pac's, 
Pac was a poet. He that, was, like, and I, I've I've talked about this a lot, like you know? in the shop, dude. I mean, if we're gonna, if you want to directly compare Biggie and Tupac, oh no, there's no comparison, not at all. There's no, but I mean, you look at mm-hmm. discography, right? How much, how many albums does Tupac have? Tupac had like a few more than Biggie, yeah. but Biggie only had two. Exactly. Biggie only had two. Nas. See, that's the thing is like, if we're gonna go, <clears throat> I base my top five, top three, whatever you want to call it, or goat. Based on, I remember the moment I heard Illmatic. I remember where I was. I remember everything about that exact moment. I was on the t- second floor of the Alameda County Library in Fremont, California. Shout out. Nickel Dime, baby. East Bay was popping. Uh, <laughs> and I was fucking sitting there. I had my not like my uh, like the old CD players that didn't the have the anti skip. That you had to like just set it down and leave it because if oh, you yeah. moved it, it yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. skipped the record or whatever or the CD, and it was uh like you hear the intro and then like it goes into New York State of Mind like boom 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 and then that was like I heard that and I was supposed to be doing homework and I just dude I didn't do any homework just I just so listened good. to the whole album from start to finish sitting at this big ass white table on the second story of this library and then I heard Life's a Bitch and like. I, I mean, I hate to say it, dude. I mean, AZ's got the best verse on that whole album, Bro. Dude. 100%, Life's dude. a bitch and then you die. That's why we get high because you never know I mean, when you're going to go. Like, I, I've, never heard a, I've never heard a feature on an album that like surpassed the artist, and that, that album was a fucking crazy Bro, album. Bro, I don't know, though, because the way Nas comes – like, AZ. AZ is amazing. But the way Nas comes in on that scene, I woke up early on my born day. I'm 20. It's a blessing. The essence of adolescence leave my body now. I'm fresh. Dude, and like, yeah. yo, What? <laughs> Stop fucking playing right now, you know son. You know what track I slept on for a long time was uh, Represent, dude. Dude. That song is a banger. One time? Like, one time for mine? Re- represent. 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 Like, uh, like, dude. And then, like. And then, uh, it ain't hard to tell. The sample on that, dude. Dude, Q-tip. Bro, that Nas. Okay. So, yeah. Nas <laughs> is the go. But you see the book over here. I got to show you after we get off yeah, here. Yeah, we get off here. In the Bro, middle. they have. Yeah. They have. It's a book. And this book. In there, they have the s- photos from the studio session with Q-Tip and Nas and <sighs> DJ Premier. Photos. Dude. And it's so fucking sick, bro. I Dude, I watched Nas at Coachella. It was 20 years, Illmatic. I was like, there. Thing. Yeah, I was there too. I didn't tell you my story. It's fucked up. Like, bro, <laughs> I cried. I fucking cried. Bro, when he made it all the way through, I was like, oh, my God. And he played Illmatic from start to finish. And then and then he did Made You Look. And it was like. And he did Dead Presidents, too, dude. He? he did Dead Presidents. Then Jay-Z yeah, came out. I know. And Dead Presidents <laughs> would represent me. And then like, say, what? Like, dude, ah! okay. So I don't know what fucking I'm pill I was on that, that year. <laughs> I'm excited. I don't know what pill it was. But I was like, you know what? I got to go back to my campsite. <laughs> and yeah. I was laying in my fucking campsite. And all I hear is Dead Presidents. And I was like. Oh, I fucked up. I, I can't. I can't go back. <laughs> I was bro. like, no, dude, I missed it. Jay Z, he brought because it's like uh, I brought. I, he's like, I'm out for presidents to represent me. I said what? And, and then, then Jay Z comes out. No, well, no, because uh, Jay Z's first song off his yeah, first Dead album, Presidents. Reasonable Doubt, is yeah. called Dead Presidents, and he looped Nas's shit without his permission because they were on their beef shit. Uh, and then so, that's right. and that was one of his biggest songs. The whole and, Ether made you look shit. Yeah, dude, yeah. that <laughs> Ether. Fuck Jay Z. You been on my dick. That's what. Ah, see, <laughs> still mad is one of the. Ah, like I fucking love Nas. Like he just he comes out with dude. Uh, Ether is up there with hit him up, and then I will say uh, it's above play with your bitch. Have you ever heard play with yeah, your bitch by Young Dolph? Yeah, dude. Also, hit him up is fucking nuts. Dude, hit him up is probably the hardest. That's play- the hardest diss track I've ever heard. I played <laughs> hit him up in here the other day, but it was just me and my roommate because we were just both working. Dude, the He's first like, line, bro. First off, <laughs> fuck your bitch and that click you claim, yo. Like, no, no. What is it though? Uh, what does he say? Like, I fuck your bitch, fat motherfucker, and then he goes. First straight, off, Get I fuck your bitch. I'm yeah. you fat. Motherfucker. Yeah, and it's, and it's yeah. like fake money, right? The whole time, <laughs> dude. Ah, we're gonna listen to some tracks. Unfortunately, <laughs> like, like uh, Tupac's like versus like only one I listen to. Dude, when I hear like "Get out the way," I'm like, all right, fuck yeah, let's just bro, this shit. no, I, I don't listen to it, dude. Okay, so Pac, <laughs> Pac, in my opinion, has some of the best, like gangster ass song, bro. On All Eyes on Me, there's that's a classic. That whole album, disc one, disc two, or whatever. Like, I guess yeah. it's it's all run together on Spotify now. But yeah, like, it was a it was a double album. It was a double yeah. album, and that was for a CD. That was insane. That and then I, I mean, just the, the whole double track your vocals thing. That's, I mean, to me, that's huge. I mean, like, well, I mean, I don't know any artist that double tracks his vocals right now and to make him sound like a lot more like 
like Tupac y. Like overdub. Yeah. yeah. It sounded, I mean, to like rap over your own vocals is nutty. I mean, I, I mean, know. he's got I, my respect. I him. love Pac. I know so many Pac songs. Like, dude, wonder why they call you bitch. Wonder why they call you bitch. Like, but, <laughs> dude, all, oh, that's such a good song. <laughs> it's know? weird because, like, my, my still all time still, it's going to be, I don't. It's not that he's my favorite one, but just Kendrick to me is just, that's it, man. Kendrick's yeah. tight. I've been having some conversations about Kendrick recently. I don't think there's any, I mean, as much as I love Nas, Biggie, I mean, even like, we can go really deep. I mean, but like, I don't think anyone touches him. I don't know. I disagree respectfully only because like, for me, Nas, like he puts out pretty good albums, like every album for the most part. Kendrick, in my opinion he puts out one good album every other album. Uh, it's like, for me, <laughs> Section 8 Section Eight was tight. Section yeah, 8.0, 8. whatever. Yeah. And then it was like, I don't remember the one after that. Maybe good I Kid could. Mad, good Kid Mad City? No, that one's fire. That one's fire. Which one did I not like? It's that one with like the brown cover that didn't have any track names. I didn't like that album. Is it Untitled? Untitled, yeah. Untitled. Yeah, I didn't really like that album, I'm going to be see, honest. See, to me, that album was more than what the album was because i mean if you see the dates on there right they have the dates when those tracks were recorded Mm -hmm. you you hear the cadences in like the most popular drake tracks and i was like yeah i mean like like i mean to be on it beforehand and then he wrote a lot of people's songs yeah oh yeah no no he's i would say it's talent as far as talented but you know how sometimes like you can give everybody your best shit but then you don't keep the best for yourself i'm not that might be the case in that album for me Mm -hmm. but like when i heard to pimp a butterfly. I, I, honestly, I actually, again, that was another album I wasn't too fond of. I Ooh. listened to it, and my homie was like, "You need to listen to that album again." Because I shared this. This was literally within this past week. Yeah. I was like, "I'm not a big fan of that album." He's like, "You need to listen to it again." You have it, to listen in, in all formats. Too. It's insane. Like your car, your headphones, yeah. and then in the shop. He and said, it, "Start to finish." I was like, "I do start to finish on Kendrick albums because you have to." Yeah. His albums have to be played not skipping tracks not at they all, have yeah. to be played you in the order up. that they were made yeah. but that one to me specifically to pimp a butterfly i was like holy shit yeah, the black I mean, of the berry yeah i mean just like what one he of was tupac's favorite favorite songs ever yeah yeah and black, then yeah and then just to hear him spit like real truth before like even i oh, mean uh, it, blackberry molasses yeah yeah yeah. One, yeah but i mean to like even hear him speak the stuff that he's i mean that's now like really come into fruition before it even happened right yeah and then i mean just the way that he describes it and like even i mean i'm not like i mean to call out his own people even essentially i mean dude i'm yeah but then i will say bro damn i remember that was another one where i remember exactly dude i was making breakfast for myself in the morning before my shift and i remember just listening to the album and my like I stopped cooking my eggs and I remember I was just in awe. I was like, holy it's like masterpiece, shit. Dude. That dude, damn is top five albums of all time. Not even artists, just albums from start to finish. And I mean like, bro, emotional. Yeah. Like I remember the first time I heard love on that album, I felt like touched. Dude. I couldn't believe it. I felt like, love I was like lust. dude, I, I was at, fuck. I was at Coachella when the album dropped. So he was playing that day. The album dropped the day before, so then I was oh, taking real? a shower and I was like listening to it, and then we see his set and he ends with love, and I was Did like, "Did he really?" And I was like, "Dude, what the fuck is this song?" Dude, I mean, to song. hear it from what he was doing before and to have a song like "Love" and to have all the stuff that he had on "Damn," mm-hmm. the whole Kung Fu Kenny thing. I mean, I was just dude, like, yeah, Kung Fu Kenny, yo. But I mean, dude. such uh, a fun one because you can play it backwards and he re- re-released it backwards, yeah, in black and white, like, yeah, has the album cover. So it's oh, like really? it plays perfectly backwards as well. And it makes sense backwards. What do you mean yeah. backwards? So the album's reversed, like in terms of like tracks. The set list. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it starts with Duckworth, which makes sense because that's literally the start well, of the they, story. Well, they go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah at the end. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Dude, I fucking love that. So we can geek out on this. It, <laughs> yeah. it works both ways, which is super interesting. Yeah. yeah. Dude, see, that's such that right there. Again, I love Kendrick. This is no shade towards mm-hmm. him. But as far as we've heard, like really talking hip hop albums. I, I feel like he misses the but the button on some of them. Like this last album, some of the songs were okay. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't a fan of that one song. He's like cussing out the girls. Like, you stupid fucking bitch. See, like, yeah, that's, I, that's dude, what's I funny. don't like that song. Because yeah. to me, that to me, I was like, yo, this is like a fucking Oscar performance right now. Because have you seen the video? No. Dude, the video yeah. is fucking insane. It's really hard for me to watch Because she's that an stuff. actress, right? And that was her first ever foray yeah. into actual, actually like rapping. Mm-hmm. So it's more oh. of an, it's supposed to be like 
uh, as other people like perceive it, like an homage to the the track with Eminem arguing with yeah uh, with Kim yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that that that's, okay that I guess that makes sense. But yeah. I mean, when you really break it down and, you, and then you see the video and you're just like, I mean the toxicity of that relationship and then also how common it is. Right. And like how much we've experienced that in our own lives. I mean, I don't know. I just, I've never, I've, I heard it and I was like shook. That was one song where I was like, damn, I'm like, yo, I love Kendrick and I put him up at the top too. But the same thing, like I listen to his albums. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. You know? And then I listen to it a second time. I listen to most very like, like high level people at least four times in a mm-hmm. row just so I'm not, to. so I'm not a fucking hypocrite. Yeah. yeah so like, you can get like an actual, yeah. The All four spoons, ounces. the four yeah. spoons. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's important. So like for creatives, you have to do them the service of it. And it's like, and I, I hate to argue it too, but Kanye is one of those too. No, yeah. I love Kanye. Yeah, sadly. I love fucking Kanye. You know, but yeah. he misses the boat a lot. I like, I mean, after to me, after yay. I was like, I, even Ye was hard for me, but I still, there's fire tracks on there. After, I mean, when Donda, I was like, I can't. Dude, anymore. Donda, or Donda was it? hit or miss. Like, there, there was, was some definitely some ones on yeah. Donda, and I was like, available for the live stream for whatever reason. I was laying in bed. I was yeah, like, oh, here. okay, this is happening. And I was like, that shit's tight. That's, I'm like, all right, all right. Well, you kind of lost me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Dude, I didn't listen. I've <laughs> never, I will say this, I've never listened to Yeezus. Never? The best. Never. One of the best ones. I've, I think that's I've a, literally, you're the only two people I've ever heard. Everybody's like, yo, Yeezus is fucking To whack. me, his best albums, Top I seven. mean, unarguably, are probably 808s and Yeezus. Yeah. And you like, really liked 808s? Oh, I think that's probably his best it, album. It's important. 808s and Heartbreaks. Yeah, 100%. Wow. Sure. So I it, like it, but I'm like, I've never heard that. I hear people skip right over that. No the way. The time period that it came out, it's yeah. so important for like what, what it did for the actual Music. ecosystem. Yeah. Dude, like, let me go. Well, yeah. like, they, street lights. Is street lights is like, you would not think so, right? That's one of my, that song. Yeah. That's one of my that top Kanye song. songs of all time. That shit goes hard. But you know like, Daniel you Caesar would, covered that song, too. I did not. It's very good. Yeah, it's Daniel super Caesar, fucking good. Is, but, but, so when you break down 808s, right? His mom died. His his fiance at that time, they broke up. And he's on a binge. He's on an alcohol binge. Everything is robotic, right? So 808s. And heartbreak. I mean, it's literally like in every single track has an 808 in it. Every single track is auto tuned apart from one. I mean, it's all like a robotic. Oh, that was Runaway too, right? What? No, no, that's my bar- that's my, my beautiful. Oh, my dark twisted yeah. fantasy, yeah. which right. is my top two. So I'd put Yeezus in my my dark. Beautiful that's my favorite fantasy. one. What? Yeah. yeah. Over college dropout and fucking 100%. graduation. A hundred percent. What? Blasphemy. I, no. Blasphemy. Way. That's a masterpiece, dude. Yeah. That's his best album. My favorite. Oh, no, my, my favorite is that one. Fantasy that's a easily. dude. Hey, real talk. I love that album. Love yeah. that album. But like, yo, I don't know. That's a ten out of ten. No, his, no. Dude, way. what are you talking about? Graduation is fire. I know it's fire, but it's like the it's actual, not that level. The way it's Sheesh. structured, it it all points to like the way Roll Dahl wrote like these books that led. To like the restructure of like all of these like Disney books and like everything like all the original books. What that were a written. comparison, dude! Yeah. Wow, yeah. I mean Val it was to that level. To fucking Kanye, yeah, it's to that level, dude. I it mean, starts off with Nicki Minaj reading as if she's yep. a little doll, and it yeah. is yeah. Cinderella, right? Yeah, yeah. And you boom, might boom, be the same. And, yeah. uh, and then, dude, talk about the features. I mean, if you talk about dude. Kanye as like a creative genius, every yeah. single album has the top artists of that generation on that album. Well, he has RZA on there, dude. Yeah. Well, I'm a well, but monster. I mean, if you look at even, I'm a motherfucking monster. And he but had if, to redeem himself after, like, he fled the country after he showed up on say blacked out on Henny. Yeah, just roasting the shit out of Taylor Swift. Like he had to fucking leave. Like he was, he was gonna be a martyr for the rest of his life. He was dead. He was in he was Hawaii, right? Then they do in Hawaii. He went to to Rome, all that, like to Europe, and then flew to Hawaii and started flying everyone out. Yep. He's like, I'm gonna come back. Have I'm you ever seen that that documentary or video? No, it's, it's literally insane. like they're all at the dinner tables, like Jay Z, Rick Ross, Beyonce, Con. The yeah. most insane black excellence, yeah. dude. It's that's absurd. what they, that whole black excellence thing. Started. And then they're just playing basketball. They're writing songs. They're just chilling. But I mean, when you take a step back, I mean, dude, that album is like, like from second to the starts to the end is like crafted masterpiece. Oh, no, dude, there's that, no waste. The whole, whole album's fire, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Devil in a New Dress, yeah. Top with top Rick Ross, songs. yo, I fucking love that, that beat. Song. Is hard. That beat goes and even just like the flow hard. of it. There's not a real chorus, there's dude. The power, to it. yeah. Duh. It's weird. Dude, that album was amazing. And then even the, the music video for that is like almost perfect. Twenty first yeah. century and doing then, something mean to it. But then if it. we're taking a step back to like Yeezus and 808s, I mean, so Yeezus is aggressive, anger, mad at the industry, mad at fashion, mad oh, at music. Yeah. And then you get 808s, it's like 
the most hurt, the most sad. It's the most honest versions you get of Kanye are mm-hmm. those two albums. Well, it's bipolar Kanye. That's exactly. what he is. Yes. He's fucking then, bipolar as fuck. Absolutely. In between that, you have My Beautiful Arc Twisted Fantasy, where it's like peak Kanye, in my opinion. That's like yeah. God level Kanye. Like, God level. like dude, Magnus, Magnus Opus. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at Coachella, dude, Magnus. I was at 2011 Coachella seeing it, and it was like, I, I wish I can describe it, dude. I but mean, yeah, it was like, like most artists have like their like you know, pop phase, electric phase, and then their punk phase. So it's like, if Yeezus was his punk phase, yep. like that shit goes on. If you haven't heard it, all right, and I'm I was, have to dude, do it. I'll I was, do it. I was, I was, Yeezus, on, yeah. Yeezus and I'll t- no, Pimp a Butterfly. Oh, to Pimp a Butterfly. Oh, there we yeah. go. We'll go fucking, I, I'll go hard. I'll I go hard on I will say that, dude, I was front row at Staples at the, for Yeezus tour. Holy, dude. I've never seen a better show in my life. Wow. Next to the Coachella one that he did. I've never seen Kanye in concert, but. Six yeah. times. Dude. I've seen Nas twice. I've seen Nas. I will never see him again. Have you heard of the the podcast um, Dissect on, on Spotify? Uh-uh. Incredible. Absolutely fucking Dude. incredible. Is it music? Yeah. All music. It's okay. Specifically. So he, like, uh, with, like... It started with the Connie album. Yeah. yeah. What's his name, though? I, I don't know his name. But he literally is just piecing down every but single he's track. he's such a fucking nerd that he take His podcast episodes are based around... It's a season, and it's based around an album, and each episode is a song. That's so sick. And then he I'm breaks down it. an entire episode as a song. So he'll play it for you, describe everything that's going on line by line, the history behind like what's happening in that person's life currently as of that song, and then move forward, and then move forward. And it's wow. like the breakdown is, is absurd. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, breakdown. have that's you ever cool. read 33 and one-thirds? No. So that's a whole book series. And every single – so each book is a different album. And it's like a different author each time, so you get a different rendition of how it's like structured. But like it's like – starts at the beginning about like this album and this is how it started. This song's about this. The song's about this. This is how it was created. I mean, it's like the geekiest book you can Dude, read. I, I and they're this big. <laughs> they have one on Illmatic. They have one on My Beautiful Arc Twisted Fantasy. They have yes. one on Pet Sounds. I mean, it, it's across the board. I mean, it's from the beginning of music to until now. Dude, I, I have to say, there's just something so incredible about music. I mean, there's people who honestly will change your life. Yeah. Like, dude, that's why Nip, yeah, dude, dude. The first time I heard Nip, I thought he was honestly like talking to me. Yeah. And I know that sounds fucking weird to say, but like Nipsey Hustle, like I don't necessarily put him as like my top rapper of all time because but he is definitely my biggest like um inspiration. Idol. Yeah. Inspiration. Yeah. I mean Kanye's real me. shit. Uh, uh, not unfortunately, but I mean to the point of like dude, I love Kanye. Fuck I mean, it. do you do you see uh, Genius? Did you watch it on Netflix? <sighs> I don't I already, I already see like the political side of Kanye because like my roommate is like super obsessed with politics, Dude, I, yeah. and I've seen like the Alex Jones stuff, and I've seen this, all, all this shit, and Dude, he's just like, God it. damn, Kanye! Like, I didn't see any of that stuff because I understand where it goes. Yeah, I under- like, exactly, yeah. and it's like I want to see it just to see what he's gonna say, but it, not because it's gonna be educational yeah, or yeah. informative, but it's like I love Kanye, and then it's seeing Kanye, I it's guess. A bummer. It's just I, I know he's gonna be one extreme when you're gonna be on Alex Jones, yeah. But when I see. You like I don't want to see the wizard behind the fucking curtain. Yeah, I just let me enjoy the music. I and I'll leave it at that for Kanye. I, I don't yeah. need to know what else he's doing because like I already know you're batshit crazy, my G. Let me enjoy your music. I will say though, if you if you do watch it, because it's a really good documentary. No, it's it's a three parter. Yeah. Is it really? It doesn't yeah. include it because none of everything that. happened after. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it really gives you an idea of like, I can't imagine being in his shoes where he was at that time, where he's one of the best producers, right? Just like drop a call it drop out as well because i do agree that's one of the greatest of yeah, all yeah. time like Dude. why wouldn't it be? but, it, but in, you were talking about they're they're covering even before college dropout so the yeah. first two episodes are literally almost before it mm-hmm. and you're seeing him go to like rockefeller right and he's there in, this, in like the in the offices and he's playing his tracks for people and they're not listening at all and but he's, he's fucking, walking into people's offices without their permission asking, yeah going to their boom box putting in a like a tape or a cd <laughs> and being like and yo then cringe rapping to these fucking a and r's that are sitting there like that like working. are trying to eat their lunch yeah dude yeah and they're just like oh, and fuck, he's going dude. office to office so but like, this guy's in here again and then you hear yeah, stories like, <laughs> yeah. you, hear, you hear stories about like dame dash talking about like he's going to like to studios and he's like standing on the tables and like rapping to jay-z and jay-z's like on his phone not even fucking paying attention to him cutting his nails i mean but like it's years, man. I mean, it's like five years of him producing all this shit and getting like thrown to the side and like to still come out and like, 
there's a whole interview at one point where well, he's like, dude, if I don't have my, if my first album's not the best album, it's my second album. If it's not the second, it's the third. Like he knows that he's going to be the fucking greatest guy ever. Well, dude, he talks about that at the end of uh, like, it's like family business is the end of college. Oh yeah. And then, he gets, and then the last, yeah. like, he's like, this is what it was. This is my yeah. story. And he's like, oh, then like one day Jay-Z was like, oh, that's tight. Mm-hmm. And I can then tell they you like, word for word that track, dude. That's dude, <laughs> that shit, like, that's it's what I'm 12 saying. minutes, man. Dude, then, I know. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I remember listening to that shit in Woodshop class, like, what the fuck? Like, that shit is so And sick. then what's the, what has it start? Like, uh, the whole toast motherfucker thing? It's a toast like to motherfucker. Pre- no, I like to, pre- I like to pre- pre- present a toast. When did he say, like, it, I said toast, motherfucker. Yeah, right? I said yeah. toast, motherfucker. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah, <laughs> and then he like talks about like whoa. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, he's like yeah. talking about his like singing his song. He's like, I don't know if I'm gonna use that, but like you know whatever. And right? then he's got the most fireous bars on that track. I mean, many color bins that push miracle whips. I mean, that's ah, fucking nuts, dude. Yo, yeah. that's a crazy line, bro. Okay, we need to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we yeah, realize yeah. we're like yeah, we we're, can, we can we're almost go. two and a half hours Wait. deep. Oh, yeah. oh wow. But I want to say about like. Uh, I kind of lost my train of thought. Whatever. We'll just end it on that music part. But guys, tell everybody where they can find you, where, where, you know, what's coming out. Tell the, tell the name of your business again, yeah. the IGs. I want to put you guys on, so tell everybody around the world. All right. So friendsoffriends.sd is going to be the main Instagram for our cafe. We also have um, Wavy, Wavy Burgers. We'll end up w, changing. W-A-V-Y? W-A-V-Y, very okay. uh, NorCal. For sure. It's popping. Yeah. And then we also <laughs> shout out Public Square always. Yeah. I mean, Aaron is like dad to all of us, really. Mm-hmm. Um, just another father figure. Good old patriarch. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shout out to 10K Coffee Lab. Um, Noah is a beast at what he does. Mm-hmm. And he's one of the best baristas slash roasters that I know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't yeah. know. I'm excited for the future. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to awesome. collab with all the homies. Yeah. Definitely push yeah. some weird shit, dude. I'm so down. Yeah, just Let's getting started. Almost there. Thank you yeah. for having us. Vamos amigos. Yeah. Let's <laughs> fucking go. I'm so excited, and I'm like, I'm really glad, Brandon, that you came on the show. And like, I mean, I've told Marco before, but like, you know, once you've been on the show, you're never not gonna be on the show again. Yay. So you're always welcome. And uh, yeah, guys, we'll do the next one and the shop, dude. I'm fucking down. Yeah, yeah, I always, I down. dude, it's a portable thing. Yeah. Like we can make this happen. Um, we can do it mid service, dude. That'd be Dude, like, we're gonna okay, so we're gonna be doing. Uh, I mean, like this is we could talk about more offline, but like we're gonna be doing a live in studio um, recording here in the next month with a uh, surprised musical guest. So it's gonna be really cool. It's been it's a pretty big band, and they wanted oh. to do it, and they're gonna be selling tickets, so it's gonna be interesting. I think I know who it might be. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you'll see. Maybe you'll some, see. We have some good homies that are musicians here in San Diego. You know, yes. it's a vibe. <laughs> it's a vibe. But we're also gonna be doing. I'm actually like I'm going right now. I'm gonna be going to the studio. I'm gonna like we're having our, our first rap show here. So I'm really, really excited. We're going to be going to the studio to see the rapper tonight. Awesome. So, oh, shit. Fucking what's popping. Yeah, it's so uh, pr- appropriate. Yeah. We're, we're ending on <laughs> hip hop. But guys, um, thank you again. Marco, fucking always a pleasure. He's my always. G. Brandon. Very nice to meet you. Welcome. And it's always a pleasure. Very excited. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I, I wish yeah. nothing but the best for my homies in arms as a fucking business owner. Prepare for the hardest ride of your life. Yeah. And we'll it's going to be it. the best ride. <laughs> All right. Peace. Later. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. That was an amazing conversation. And I'm just so excited for them i cannot wait to see what they have cooking and like what they just are going to bring to life down in national city so guys when it opens i will let you guys know and you definitely got to go visit my homies brandon and marco that's right guys thank you again i appreciate you all so much and last but not least guys i want to thank everyone around the world who continues to listen to caffeine and green every day every week whatever spread the word y'all i love it guys thank you so much and i just want to say you know the podcast is uh doing well we are going to be having some amazing guests for you guys. And we have a new project with my homeboy, Danny Goikolea. We're doing a little bit more skate. So, guys, enjoy it. We have some cool stuff coming up this coming weeks. And, yeah, I'll see you all next week. Peace!